I believe this is the beginning of the commentary. My name is Judd Apatow. I am the co-writer and director of this movie. My name is Steve Carell. I play Andy Stitzer, and I had some other involvements as well. I'm Shelley Malil. I play Haziz, and um, I was at the snack bar. I'm Seth Rogen. I play Cal, and uh, I had some behind-the-scenes magic as well. I am Mooj, I play Mooj, and um, my name is Jerry Bednob, and uh, I've got a good part in this movie. <laughs> uh, my name is Paul Rudd, and I play David. Yeah. I'm Leslie Mann, and I play the drunk girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jane Lynch, and I play Paula. I'm Romney Malco, and I play Jay. So uh, that's Steve and his boner. Well, I guess we should talk a little bit about how this started. It's weird because we're recording this about two weeks before the movie opens, so we, we're we feeling like it might do well, but it'll really be embarrassing if we're all cocky right now and then it <laughs> goes in the toilet. It's going to be a huge hit, I'm yeah. just going to say it right now. Yeah. So it's, a, it's awkward for us. We'll try to contain our hopeful enthusiasm. So, Steve, uh, if we can recall how this all started, we were on the set of Anchorman, and Steve was getting laughs. And being a Jewish producer, I sidled up next to him and said, Hey, do you have any ideas for yourself? And, uh, and this was one of them. Went to Judd's office and pitched a couple of ideas. And this was actually a second idea. I pitched at the very end of the meeting. And uh, you kind of took to it immediately. I relate to it. And I don't even want to go into why. I don't know why I understand this material so well. It's that opening boner shot. I don't know. I know it. I know it in my soul. So you uh, came up with this idea as a result of a, a sketch you did at Second City? Well, we used to do improv sets at Second City. It never actually entered into a show. It was just an idea that I had for a character of a guy um, surrounded by a group of guys who all could speak effortlessly about their sexual conquests and escapades and somehow this guy was just kind of always playing catch up and uh, it was clear that he couldn't speak the same language and that was essentially the pitch and I remember when you uh, pitched it to me it was all about describing a woman's breasts as feeling like a bag of sand that's where you got me <laughs> <laughs> and also you, as part of your pitch to me your, your character said you know how when you pull down a woman's panties there's all that baby powder there <laughs> <laughs> so it's this all is powdery down there. this is smart tech which was designed by production designer jackson degovia what is the difference and between high it's quite a good set i i, I feel bad that they're not selling actual stereos there it seemed like a waste of a good sales space um, well, I was just wondering, what is the difference between uh, these? And this is uh, the first scene uh, that introduces Seth Rogen as Cal, who's also our co-producer. Yeah. And uh, and this is actually the, I'm sorry, the first scene that introduces Paul. Apology accepted. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, most of this uh, is improvised. Seth's entire story here and Steve's entire story is here. Uh, here is improvised, and I am. Uh, I'll still take credit for it, yeah. with my writing credit. But <laughs> <laughs> it falls under that umbrella, I think. Well, you were there, Judd, when he did it. Yeah. I was there when he did it. I, I remember screaming this very important direction: "Do a different one." Yeah. <laughs> Make it funnier. Uh, what? Uh, how did we get into this idea of Tijuana? And well, it's funny. I. Uh, I actually thought of the just, it's funny for someone to tell a story about a woman fucking a horse. Not a donkey specifically, a horse is funnier. And uh, it was going to be during the poker game, but we just shot this first. And it's funny because I really wanted to remember it, so I wrote it everywhere all over my apartment. Woman fucking a horse. And people would always come over. It was like, what is, like, there's a hundred post-it notes with the words woman fucking a horse written all over my apartment. But uh, this was the story, and I remembered it. <laughs> I have the same post-it notes on my post. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> They're very common. <laughs> and then uh, this this next story is also improvised. It was... This, the original story was about taking all of uh, your electrical cords and putting them in tubing so the apartment would look cleaner. And then in the middle of the take, I just said, do a different one, completely different. And so why was this in your mind? 
I, and I didn't have any bread. I don't know. It wasn't in my mind as I started to to talk. That was pretty awesome. The words just came. That was I think I was touched by the gods Ooh. during this. Somewhere, Henny Youngman was looking down, giving you this. <laughs> oh, that, that's my favorite thing. With. <laughs> I gotta tell you something. I'm really excited. About now let me just tell you how lazy I am as a writer and director. How this scene was shot was there's one camera pointing at Paul and one pointing at Jane, and I just made them improvise this 35 times. <laughs> and then at the end, I said, good job, Judd. <laughs> As I recall, you did all the work, Mr. Rudd. Well, that's nice of you to say that's not completely true. I, I think that uh, you and I are tossing the energy ball here. I had a sore back that day, and I wasn't at, on top form, and thank God you were. Well... Is that kiss and ice contest? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember going over and, and Judd, you being concerned that y uh, Yamo B there would be known by about ten people right. that had seen the film. And there, were, there were other more popular Michael McDonald songs. but uh, That's but like me being a Michael McDonald fan saying, that's not my favorite one. That was just pure self-indulgence as a member of the fan club. Right. I, I, I did sing a lot of Michael McDonald on the set. Now, this this scene here was uh, not in the uh, theatrical version, and uh, I just enjoyed two guys <laughs> using the N-word a lot. <laughs> I think genius writing on sets part is what I think about this scene. Every time I see it. What did I do? <laughs> I remember, he was off that day. I, I, remember, I remember the Chinese girl was the customer, and she asked me, what's a sign nigger? And I said, the is the Middle Eastern word for chink. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't, she, I don't think she was very happy. <laughs> you know, you're like Don Rickles. If you hit everybody, yeah, yeah, okay. that's what I mean. you got to attack everyone but, and then it evens out. But I like when Judd reversed it and made um, Romani say, you know, the nigger word he himself had to say right and I'm saying it. That's, 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 that's what makes it okay is he yeah, calls that's himself right. that. That's right. I love that you called it the nigger word because you don't want to... You don't want to... That would be politically That would be very yeah. uncouth, Jerry. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I applaud your couthness. <laughs> now this, uh, you know I'm known for that. Yes. So this is, uh, this is a scene where the... Uh, this is a scene where they invite Andy to uh, play poker. And uh, he is a serial murderer. Oh, cares, There's a lot of serial. There was a lot of discussion when we were making the movie that does Steve look and seem like a serial murderer? So that was a note we were getting from the studio, which is he's wearing this jacket. He looks like Jeffrey Dahmer, and so we decided to just mention we that a lot. Why? <laughs> did that offend you? That, that that they thought? No, it didn't offend me. I mean, I I growing up, people kind of felt that way about me. So. <laughs> <clears throat> it wasn't anything I hadn't heard before. Yeah, that'd be cool. You know how to play, right? <laughs> yeah, I play on. And I have killed people. Yes. Explain the story. But only one, and that doesn't make you no. count as a serial killer. <laughs> exactly. You have to kill three wow. in the same way. Oh, well, so I'm going to go tell Paula. I know this. <laughs> of course, you're from Canada. You know exactly. what you're <laughs> Now, Jerry, have you been in movies before? Yeah, I've been, oh, a big blockbuster with Polly Shaw. Which one? Um, Encino Man. Yes. You're an Encino Man? Yeah. No way. Who are you? I was the guy who told Brendan Fraser, no wheeze in the juice. No wheeze in the juice. No wheeze in the like, juice. Yeah, that was a big scene. What, where were you? In, I can't remember. In, in a sort of 7-Eleven store. Okay. I Imagine that. I was, and they use that in the trailer when he's putting his head under the Yeah, yeah, machine. right. Holy if I can interject, I, I, this, this poker scene was pretty much the scene I pitched to Judd. This was kind of what I tried to do at Second City, was a bunch of guys all telling these dirty stories, and Andy is the one guy who just can't keep up, and it becomes evident very fast that he's a virgin. I, uh, I was really nervous when we showed this movie for the first time that during this scene people would just feel sad and wouldn't laugh at all I was really surprised that they laughed at each beat because there is there's the potential for this to really be depressing yeah 
<laughs> You're Pexlet there, there Romany. Completely You're and utterly there. unspoken okay. agreement. Okay. You know, if you knew so what I was man. dealing with, you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. my body okay. Okay. Monkey trouble. Every single thing I could You're in monkey play. trouble? Yeah. We're not going to go who brews up big now. What's your name? Tara Bush? What fuck? Tara Bush? Tara Bush. Tara Bush. Tara Bush. Tara Bush. Tara Bush. I thought you were getting Tara Bush and Tara Reed mixed up. And you were saying Tara Bush. I have actually worked with Tara Bush. That's a term. She was a little child. Now, Jerry, what percentage of, of what you said do you think people understand? Yeah. What? <laughs> in general. In general, how much of what you said do you think people understand? Is I mean, I know I'm in trouble in the audience. People in the uh, you know, I said, what did he say? <laughs> and I know, I, I usually at the end of my set, I say after 45 minutes, I say, well, you know, I'm glad you enjoy my comedy. And this guy said, oh, he's a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that actually happened in Florida. <laughs> no, the, but we haven't explained <laughs> that you are a comedian. To the people who wouldn't know. Yeah. We, we, well, I have to explain, and every line I have to say after punchline, I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> give us, give us three of your best jokes, Jerry. My best, uh, my, my, in my routine. Yes. Or my, or oh, just joke, joke. No, in routine. Oh well, I, I say something like, um, what I say, like, um, what's this thing about um, o Osama bin Laden is saying now that he's not aware of 9/11. I say, where has this guy been living in a fucking cave? <laughs> and then I said, people I say, I said to him, Jerry, were you affected by 9 11? I said, fuck, I'm still recovering from 7 11. <laughs> so that's one of my jokes I do. And I said, I auditioned for the, um, uh, the show um, Survivor. I got turned down because they found out I was from Bangladesh. I had too much experience. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're the turban cowboy. Yeah, oh, you're quite turban. My dad looks just like me, except he has a receding turban. That's a turban joke. Do you think we should have you do 45 minutes straight? Yeah. Um, <laughs> who's going to pay? Who's going to pay? I'd love to do that. You know that. This will be your HBO special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, she loved. To there could be a point to that, dog. Why don't you? Why don't we, we should it. chip in and let this man do his yeah. routine. <laughs> now, now Ramen, you have an interesting background because you are a, a rapper. <laughs> Has anyone ever sounded whiter saying that? <laughs> <laughs> a rapist? Is that <laughs> you <laughs> uh, tell, us, uh, rap. tell us some That's of your rap. <laughs> yeah, I come from the old hip hop background, old school. I mean, like had this group once upon a time. <laughs> We had like one like real hit, and uh, like I don't know, man. It's like one of those things that you're glad you went through, but you really don't miss it. I like checks arriving on time. Yeah, and I like the concept of not having to pack a piece to go to work. <laughs> All of that kind of, you know. I don't know. Just a much happier environment in the film industry, I guess. And now, I, but when you had a, a rap band, I don't know if they call it a band, when it's several rappers, and you said that the record company forced... Uh, you guys to name yourselves the college boys. What well, they didn't really force us. It's like check this out. I ain't, I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell the truth right now. All right. Okay. We had this name. We was called RMG, and then we came. We left Texas, and we was called Concrete Evidence, and then we hired this manager. What did RMG stand for? Just Regis Malcolm and Gidry. That was the original dudes in the group, right? You know, back in them days, you had groups like that. You know what I'm saying? So we figured we could get away with it. And then one day, one of the s smarter guys in the group came up with the concept that, you know, since we perform at so many colleges, we should call ourselves the college boys. Ah, and, and that was the end of your career. career. And that was pretty much the end of my career. So <laughs> it, it was literally, you think I'm fucking around. It's majority rules in this group, and, and like... You can't pander. So the guy said, you, I have three names for you, college boys, gay boys, and uh, what else? Yeah. Jerky no, boys. No, 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 it was like literally, there was no other. It was college boys, and we had to vote on it with the manager that we hired, and if you live Listen to the album. There's only one voice on the entire album, but majority rules, you know. So yeah. that's so. why I stopped being a rapper. No, this is oh, first. dude, no, you got hot shit though. Yeah, you should bust, bust a little. Whoa, whoa, go, Seth, bust that one. I give you a beat. Bust yeah, that come one. Come on, Seth. Bust that come one, Seth. Come on, come on. Oh man, this is this, no. Come on, come on. <laughs> right. <laughs> come on, Seth. I'm just gonna say no right now. <laughs> I uh it's gonna be fine. They don't even remember. Those guys are cool. This is gonna be bad. Yeah, well virgin's not a dirty word. You know what's a dirty word is asshole, and that's what you guys are. You know, I may not have had sex, but I could fuck you up. 
Yeah. Come on. Hey, David. That's amazing. That, that that's a fake backdrop behind that door. It's true. That, Thank you very oh, much. Oh, yeah. He's going to come in there and yeah, take over. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but that shot where Steve is walking in is actually, this is an entirely different place. This isn't even a real store, which is kind of amazing that it was... Where, that wasn't even a sound stage, really. What was it? It was an old uh, staple. It was an old shut yeah. staple. What happened to all those TV sets? Um, there are, uh, Michael Mann is using them for the Miami Vice movie. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I wish y'all had to use that one line that soaked your nuts in holy water. I actually thought that was. <laughs> I was I was offended. I'm not even Roman Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> now this was an interesting scene. Steve, how did it feel to do this scene with uh, Jerry? Holy shit! This. <laughs> I'm still kind of. Re- <laughs> Recoiling from this scene, there uh, there was a part of this scene where I was off camera and Jerry is just going off, as you can see, and I could not stop laughing and he gets very angry at me because I ruining his take with my laughter. Oh, wait a minute! This is that scene. This is Whitney. butthole yeah. pleasures. Yes, rusty trombone. I, 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 there was so dirty flying Sanchez. squirrel. Shit that oh, yeah. I never heard of a in my of life. Shit. Egyptian Ooh, yeah, I. yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody had something to contribute. Uh, you know, uh, but Jerry, you looked like you were going to strike Steve. You almost punched him. Well, you said, yeah. "Stop fucking up my line." Yeah, he was laughing. I couldn't you know. help it. This is my big fucking Where break here, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think you got me with uh, no, no, this is um, shit stain balls. Or... Oh, my God. Okay. You know, I will say, I'm, I'm a No, I think I got with kids, fucking lizard kids. Yes. Oh, no, don't say that. I made a point of cutting that out of the movie. Oh, don't say it on the DVD. Okay, okay. I don't want to hear your screwing kids improv. Yo, <laughs> yo can I tell you that that Jeffrey Dahmer thing really came out when you started pulling on that door and you ran around in a circle trapped in that corner? Yeah. You definitely showed some Jeffrey Dahmer shit right there. I respect them so much. Well, do, do you remember, though, like sit, sitting around and trying to think, going down the, the kind of the checklist of every weird every sexual... Every weird, dirty kind of, sexual thing that is humanly possible, and some don't involve humans at all, is what I uh, realized. Do you know, we know what they all mean, though? I know what every one of them means. Except, and this is the one, you know, I have a pretty dirty sensibility, I would say, pussy juice cocktail really throws me for a loop every single time I hear it. Well, you've got to do it with ice, otherwise... It's true, yeah, that's bearing. why, well, he didn't specify. Yo, I had somebody tell me two days ago in a text message that they were going to give me a billiard. Now, I'm trying to understand what a billiard... I would imagine is. it's someone hitting uh, your balls with their dick. Please leave us alone, all right? No, a oh, woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. I don't I'm trying to imagine the balls in the mouth because you put the balls in the hole in billiards. Oh. Right? I'm not sure, but then I'm wondering what happened to the pool stick. You know what I mean? This is exactly like the commentary for uh, Kundun. Exactly. <laughs> is there a, a sticker on this identical. one, I think? I just got handed a note by our... Producer Shauna, who wrote this direction for this whole commentary, less semen, more emotion. <laughs> well, that was, uh, I'd like to say that was one of Judd's actual directions he gave Romney, I think. That was, that's the type of direction we received. <laughs> there was a lot of, like, it would always go into a Romney, was always talking about semen blockage. And, and Jeff oh. wanted to talk about how the semen blockage made him feel. Exactly. Oh, right. That's directing. Yes, so. exactly. No, it's true, though, yeah. I mean, whenever I think of somebody who hadn't had sex for that long, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. Oh. Exactly. Romney knew one guy when he was a kid whose testicles exploded, and ever since then, that's all he hears. Dude, you should have seen how they had to peel it back and like clean all the grass out of it. Oh, oh man. It was really foul. And then they actually ended up stitching him up. But what really no, 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 no. Go into greater detail. Okay. <laughs> yeah. what, really, what really happened was it didn't explode, you know? It ruptured just a little? I don't know what to do. No. Yeah. Oh, a friend of mine <laughs> in high school was a pole vaulter, and the pole snapped. Oh! And the pole went right into his testicles. Oh, my God. And skewered them. This is not, well, I got to say, no, we have to come up with a name Steve. for that. The, Steve. That could be a billiard. Or that would be the pole vault. That, that, <laughs> that could be oyster. That is the bulbous tiki. Oh. The bulbous Steve, tiki. Hey, Steve, no need to sugarcoat it. Why don't you get her back right now? So uh, joining us right now is uh, Jonah Hill. Now Jonah had one line in the movie in the eBay store, and we were so amused that we let him improv for about two hours with Catherine, assuming we would cut it out. 
And then on the very last preview, we said, let's see if Jonah gets some laughs. And he did, and it's actually in the movie. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. You could go to the mic, little Jonah. Thank you. Take the mic. That's uh, that's very nice of you guys. Do you realize okay, this is the first time I didn't expect everyone here to be uh, so nights. drunk. I was going to be like a couple of people in like a dim lit room. And a bunch of party animals. It's fun. Okay, yeah, I will. You know, it's weird. Like you seem, you look so much younger in these in these scenes than you do in like the earlier scenes of the movie. And I'm wondering, Steve, if... What was that? Is it intentional? Am, am I just fucking up the DVD right now? Like saying that? <laughs> You're saying you know, his, uh, the way his age range varies scene to scene? Yeah. Like it's like, a mark. Like, yeah. Like, like, like he was tired in the yeah. morning, you know, and then he's like, <laughs> he's looking all fresh all of a sudden. Could be from the run. <laughs> this is all... Oh, those were dope. <laughs> this isn't in the movie. It's only in the DVD. Those were so tight. <laughs> Man, that deep breath was scary, Steve. I didn't like that. I dated her for a while after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it went well. <laughs> now, this was an attempt at, like, a Buster Keaton-esque type uh, gag. Uh, semi-successful, I think. Okay. It's the larger eruption uh, bus bit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you know, it's a throwback. <laughs> and then we went for the dog's fucking joke, which... You know, it's a classic. I, I, I was a little embarrassed because it's been done, but never with the dog looking at the camera before. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, and we have two different breeds of dogs fucking, which is a little more risque, I think. But the dogs were wearing condoms. It's just true. so people they are aware well. that we were conscious of that. Dog semen is acceptable in. You would semen with dog? Yes. Okay. Less, Jerry, less semen more much. Less dog semen more much. <laughs> I'm nervous. I never had a when we were doing the writing of the movie, we were very concerned about would you wonder why he's a virgin? And we would do these big roundtables with a zillion comedy writers and try to come up with all the reasons why he was a virgin. And uh, this is actually not in the, the movie, but we uh, put it in the DVD. And uh, it's uh, him trying to take a woman's bra off. Oh my God! You came in your pants. It's it's topless for the DVD. Sure, you paid for this, people. You're getting your money right now. <laughs> and that's Carla Gallo from Got Undeclared, yep. uh, who is the toe sucker. And it, and uh, I was so sad for her that she had to suck on my toe. I. <laughs> God, oh, was that your real toe? It was my God. I, I and I cleaned it and I I washed it and I didn't actually walk on any floors and I didn't put it. But she still had to suck on my toe for about two hours. Well, you know what? I was actually over at Elizabeth Banks' house, who plays Beth, um, just like a couple weeks ago before she left. I'm bragging, Ron. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> with her husband Max, okay. right? <laughs> and um, I actually ended up speaking about this scene, and, she, and um, Carla was like telling me how sweet and concerned you were about the fact that she had to suck the toe, and she said that when she actually got down to sucking your toe, that it tasted like handy wipes. <laughs> you know, you made it worse with your cleanser. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I'd been rubbing it with handy wipes all day. Dude, that one woman over there, y'all should have, she's just got more screen time. She's wow. a sexy yeah, ass dancer. Oh yeah, I remember the woman. Yeah. That was wow. crazy. Nine dollar beer night. Okay, listen. Uh, now this uh, is the sequence where to go one Steve... Down. Um, Tries to pick up a drunk woman. This scene, with an enormous amount of it, is improvised. We just put three cameras on, on Romney and let it fly. But uh, Leslie, maybe uh, you could talk about your preparation because uh, Leslie was very concerned to do an original drunk. She wanted to do an original drunk, and I said, "Why don't you go out with Seth mm-hmm. and a friend? We'll get a car for you and get hammered and videotape it, and then we'll watch it." And that will help guide us as to what it might look like. Is that right, honey? All you're doing is using the instinct. Yes. Uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> you're not going to go there on this story? Seth, what were you doing? I was there the whole time. It was great. Uh, I remember 
thinking it was hilarious that I was doing this. And I remember praying that we didn't make out at any point. <laughs> <laughs> you were pretty humble. Yeah, that, 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 that was my only goal. Uh, How close were you to making out with Seth? We did make out four times. No. <laughs> but I remember she ate bacon wrapped hot dogs. And I remember I didn't even eat them. Like, you know, you're drunk when like, you're eating shit that like a heavy set 23 year old dude isn't eating. <laughs> Like, I wouldn't touch those fuckers, <laughs> Leslie. Let's just get bacon wrapped hot dogs. <laughs> exactly. Let's fuck it. Let's just get them. <laughs> that didn't bring up good vomit. <laughs> bacon vomit is bad. Vomit. That's worse vomit. So, so how much did you have to drink the night that you were uh, practicing? No, I'm looking. You're looking at quite a bit. And you karaoke Oh yeah, what? karaoke. You did karaoke. We're bad at it. What what song? Um, a Queen song. I think we are the champions. Yeah, <laughs> you are truly the champions. <laughs> do you remember when we watched the tape the next day? What you said when you watched it? No. You said, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed all these years. I just thought I was cute. <laughs> but I'm really obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that tape was destroyed or something. It I was. Saw it. it was yeah. destroyed. It, right now is my kid taking a bath. Yeah. yeah. That's what is on it. <laughs> yeah. You got the but that was a time. A I'll tell you what. That was, that was, that was, you know what that was, Seth? That was you co-producing. I co-produced getting mm -hmm. your wife very drunk one night. <laughs> And it was fun. It was very awkward. I was, uh, I mean, it wasn't awkward once we got drunk, and it wasn't awkward even once I got there, because I've known you for a long time, but just the concept of, like, so what do you do tonight? Well, I'm going out with Judd's wife and getting drunk with her and videotaping it. That sounds weird. Hi, I'm Andy. You look comfortable. Now, this little run got cut out uh, just for time, because we had so many funny things in the bar. But clinically alive. Oh, look, Ooh, you're remember this? Yeah, this is good. Oh, he dances like a swashbuckler. I, I like do. that. <laughs> I learned that from a pirate, actually. Hi, <laughs> Captain Yellow Shirt. Captain Yellow <laughs> Shirt. <laughs> now, when we go to the drunk women, it's actually Leslie's friend, uh, Denise. Yes. Uh, plays the main drunk woman who's marrying Dan. And she was on... Uh, the Undeclared show is the That's new good. gym teacher, so and uh, she really seems like a drunk girl. She was out with us when we got very drunk. She was. So funny. She was also <laughs> practicing. <laughs> now, the reason why they're wearing wigs is why, Leslie? Why? Because that's like a sassy thing girls like to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's our wigs tonight. We're wigging out. <laughs> yeah, we're wigging out. <laughs> Yes, yes, Mr. So we, we yes. shot this in a club and it was very stinky with the smell of sweat and ass yeah. and it was uh in a mouth. <laughs> you might call that Dr. Seuss's penis this shit was funny. <laughs> it looks like a looks like a lighthouse. Yeah. That would have been funnier, see, man. Come on. The old head of Kinsale. <laughs> Take a swig with a wig. Now, Steve, how did it feel? Because I remember Ooh, during this scene... Here I, it comes. I, yes. I had to yell a couple of things out. One was I had to yell, Leslie, squeeze Steve's ass. Yes. And then there was some sort of kiss instruction. No, my question is, how did it feel for you? <laughs> me? I had to a boner. watch me make out. I have the dailies at home. I use them as a sexual aid. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept doing take after take. I have to say, of all the women I made out with yeah. in this movie, <laughs> Leslie was the best. No. Oh, that's nice. You know, actually, all the women that I made out on the set, was I think, Leslie, you were the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to take responsibility for her wearing that funny hat. That's maybe Dude. all I contributed to the entire movie. Yeah. I'm going to say, in the car accident, that I, I'm dead serious. Every time I laugh at that scene, that you know, when it comes out, I've got to tell you that that hat is a big part of the comedy. you got to look out. Women in hats are nuts. Dude. Crazy. If any of you are listening to this wearing a hat, remove it. <laughs> I remember Seth said she's got to wear one of those Alicia Keys outfits. Yeah. <laughs> right. I just was taking out all the rejection I was getting at bars and like putting them all into Leslie's camera. She, you know what she's got to do? Tell me that you know I'm not good enough for her. That's what women do. <laughs> this bit was my wife's idea. The breathalyzer. Yes. <laughs> Blow into this, will you? Recommended I get one. <laughs> now, we took a while trying to figure out what the best song to sing when you're drunk. Okay. Wow. 
and uh, this seemed appropriate. And she killed it. She killed it. In fact, yeah, I don't she... know why the hell I tried to rhyme on a DVD knowing you did. <laughs> Shit. Well, I want to know why this car. I don't know. It just seemed like an interesting looking car. <laughs> it's a funny car. Yeah, it is. Yeah. A, yeah. I, she would drive this car. Exactly. You buy that hat, you drive that car. <laughs> I would have seen day. it in a GT myself, but okay. And Leslie was very, very ill when we shot this. Oh, really sick. And just bringing it anyway. No shit. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. She didn't tell me that before she kissed me, though. <laughs> 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 hey, Leslie, did you have anything to do with picking this song? Dan rhymes with no. Dan. I, no. I just I went on the internet so, looking. Okay. There was a Get Your Freak on oh, Remix. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, we looked through the, yeah, we did look around for songs. Yeah, I did. I remember you feeling bad every time you had to kiss Steve, going, what if he can't work the next oh, three days? Yeah. Yeah. Just the way you do that right there. <laughs> no, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me get this shit on Steve's face, then everyone will really get no. it to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone I made out oh. with on this movie was really sick. And you didn't get sick at all? Really, everyone was ill. I and when I had to make out with them. I've told before. And, uh, and did you get sick at all during the movie? No, but I made my whole family sick. You did? <laughs> no. You no, everybody was fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> now, Leslie, very aggressively, you wanted to vomit on him. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you feel that's important? Do you think I'm pretty? <laughs> um, I don't know. I just felt like it needed to be done. <laughs> because we were, we had a whole sequence where he, he gets arrested, and we decided not to do the vomit thing because it was raining. It was the heaviest rain of the entire winter. And then Leslie just kept saying, I must puke on him. I have to puke in his face. And then, oh, my God, she's asleep. Yo, where's That was Maude's idea. Oh, my God. That was Maude, our daughter's idea. She's like, Mommy, you should fall asleep in the car while you're drinking and driving. And she's seven. And she had another button to it. Like, two days later, she said... You should gasp. <laughs> and then I said to her, I go, hey, we shot you joking. And it was really funny. And then she said, but did you gasp? <laughs> See? But did you Just give like her, a writer. Did, did you give her right to credit? I know. Oh, oh, are you okay? A fucker came out of That right there to me is, you know, the hat has turned to a whole new position. We <laughs> talked a little bit to the side. <laughs> The delivery of that line, dog. Now, I believe you're going to be puking up yogurt and what strawberry else? Yogurt. And, yeah. um, strawberry yogurt. And strawberry yogurt. But it's so extreme on this cutback. It was cut a couple back. of different types of yogurt. It looked like it? Preparation like, Age or something. Yeah. Yeah. The Kiefer. Like a a Kiefer. Kiefer. It, look, Kiefer and a it looks like somebody melted a candle on you. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about that vomit that allows the audience to laugh. Yeah, because yeah, it's so much. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's cute. Gross. It's it is. Cute. It's yeah. very cute it's very vomit. Cute vomit. Yeah. <laughs> vomit has never looked better. This, <laughs> is one of, this is one of my favorite things, just the fact that we're breaking fluorescent bulbs. That was Adam McKay's idea from uh, the writer director of Anchorman, he, yeah. he said they got to be breaking fluorescent bulbs for no reason while they talk. Yep, I love shit like that. That when you pick up a drunk woman who's falling. This down is my favorite thing. This is your favorite scene in the movie, Jenna. Yeah, the whole pussy on the pedestal concept. Well, no, it's just the idea of some people being so bored at work that that's what they do for fun. You know, like, this would be really a great place to work because, in truth, all of us would be fired. Yeah. <laughs> We're like they're just a you know showing up drunk breaking. But I feel, inventory. I feel like I would do that if I worked at a store like that. Yeah, yeah. Like go outside and do stupid yeah. things like that. <laughs> now this uh, this scene kind of encapsulates how we, we shot the movie. We had a camera on Romney and a camera on Steve, and then Romney just went into this crazy run about pussy on the pedestal. None of this is written, and then we just let this conversation go and go. Do you remember this, Steve? This day, <laughs> were you shocked that that's where Romney yeah, was well, going? I, I you really. Just just have to listen to him. <laughs> you, you can't expect that there will actually be any dialogue that uh, was from the page. But it's, what's great about it is that you have to listen and you have to react and respond to what's going on. The whole pussy on the pedestal thing came out of nowhere and then it became a running gag in the movie. <laughs> yeah, when that other guy says it. <laughs> but you know what, though, I have to say is that, like, the concept of being a virgin and having all of this dialogue, I'm always at a loss for words. I never know what to say when I'm doing shit like this, so please forgive me. But I do want to say that I just kind of feel like it's all pretty, in my opinion, it all seems pretty realistic that 
to some degree there's truth in all of it. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not just making it up and trying to be funny. It's the truth. But you, know? you really think you got to take the pussy off the pedestal? Uh, yeah, I genuinely Pussy is that. human. Yeah. You think pussy is human? This is this <laughs> is like you and me. Yeah. So no. basically, what you're saying is you're not saying any of this as a joke. No, I'm dead These fucking serious. Feelings. Look, this is how I feel, bro. I'm being straight up and down. But my shit is all like, you know, I'm like a ghetto philosopher. You know what I mean? So. It might have sounded funny that I was saying take the pussy off the pedestal, but I was referring to the mental pedestal. You know what I mean? Yes. And a lot of you should take this note, seriously speaking. Anytime you find yourself intimidated by the pussy... Wait, can I get a pen? Oh, hey, I got a pen. Hey, 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 Romney, is this from the Bible where we're talking yeah, about? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he was tripping the other day. Y'all gonna think I'm joking. Yeah, Romney, Romney yeah. learned how to get laid from the Bible. No, I didn't learn how to get laid. But I did learn... A long time ago, I've read the Bible a few times, you know what I'm saying? I've been through it a few times. And there was, there was a part in it, I'm not joking, that where it broke down how to approach women. And I'm not playing. You would, am, am I just messing up the DVD? No, I want to know. Okay, okay. It's four hours long. All right. Going now. <laughs> no, okay. okay, now what is it? Was it Proverbs, verse yeah, 26, yeah. chapter 6? Right. It's the book of Pussalite. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think it's the same kind of... Uh, right, I think you got it in 24. You opened it up for me, though. Uh, right, yeah. yeah. Why don't we rename this movie the Ten Commandments? <laughs> you know, no, but I'm just serious. It says, like, you know, be wary of she with the compliment of tongue and not to let her lure you into blah, 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 blah. Anyway, the point is, is that it really made me realize that when you approach anyone and you approach them with compliments, you tell so much about yourself in what your compliment is because your compliment usually comes from your value system. So if you approach someone and you're approaching them and you're saying, yo, you're complimenting material. Are you talking to me? Anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking to me, you're talking to Come on, look at it. You think it's sitting in the room, bro. <laughs> so I learned that whenever I approach women, like I don't really approach them and give them no compliments. No compliments whatsoever because I ain't giving it up like that. Truth of the matter is if you That's get a compliment. you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, no, in the approach. I mean, I can be genuine and give a compliment if it's due. But it's in the approach. It's not like that. Are you sure you're I'm not confusing the Bible with yeah. men are from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> I like it to be approach. I like how Romney's broken up hitting on women into the same steps that yeah. planes use when they uh, come into an airport. Hey, There's the initial approach. Yeah, you know, when you're taxiing. Yeah, exactly. You, you turn it in and you light it up. Yeah. You can't you do that. Now, when the relationship becomes turbulent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, now the, but should women take the, the, the penis off the pedestal? You know what? Um, I don't think the never women do put that. it there. <laughs> never do yeah. that. We can, put our penis in the reach. Yeah. With the pants. It depends. Like, to me, I, I sincerely believe you. I don't I think the women the put the, the penis on the pedestal. But what I do think is that, like, women do have a cupboard that they keep the penis in. You know what I mean? And I feel like they need... so much of a pedestal. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think if we're going to stick with alliteration, it's cock in the cupboard. <laughs> you got to keep the cock. Of the cover. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would be the female yeah. version of Which this. Which is movie. much better than a dick in a drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is unfair. I think it's unfair. Like a um, the now, Jane, have you ever worked with anyone like Romney before? No, I haven't, and he has the softest lips in Hollywood. <laughs> and I've kissed a lot of lips. You know, you have a really nice pair, but again, I have to say that I think that Leslie was definitely the best person I made out <laughs> Why do you keep right. hitting on my wife? I'm right here. <laughs> well, I found Leslie to be the best kisser. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, you actually said that Leslie was pretty good kisser, too. Right? Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't say it to you. Well, you were just eavesdropping. Well, I wonder if they enjoyed that. You know what's weird is, you know who's a really good uh, kisser is uh, actually is Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> <laughs> he is. I, it's because he has no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> This was the first thing we shot. Was the first it? thing we oh. shot. Oh wow, that yeah, was. was the very first thing. And this was the last thing. And we that shot. was the very last thing. <laughs> we that's shot. right. Wow, we that's interesting. Interesting. true. Whoa. Do you think that's too far? The the nipple licking right there? Nope. nope. What was funny in the Foley group was getting the guy <laughs> to add in the nipple well, licking sounds. <laughs> that's that not enough that to me. That was very funny. I thought. <laughs> Did you watch a bunch of different pornos to find that scene? Jeff? There was an enormous <laughs> amount of research done by oh, our yeah. staff <laughs> about <laughs> pornography. By Andrew Cohen. By Andrew Cohen, and Andrew our Cohen. associate producer. <laughs> sat in his office watching pornography, begging for privacy. Mike Mittendorf.
That's right. Your name's on the DVD. Eat it up. Enjoy this moment. Can the more people's names we mention, the more people will feel obligated to buy the DVD. So we can just mention a lot of people's names. <laughs> mention all consumers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, this is an idea that just would be funny that they would be watching a movie at work, and then slow, Dawn of the Dead is kind of a kick-ass movie. It's a movie in a movie. And then uh, when Romney just started screaming at it, which wasn't really planned. It really scared but, uh, What I remember about this scene is, Romney, you had an entire improv that we cut out about how just because I get a pedicure doesn't mean I lick ass. <laughs> what was also funny is you kept showing your hands as you referred to the pedicure that you got. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Judd, Judd came and thought, he came to me and goes, yo, that's genius. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, the whole thing is like... Oh, did I fuck that up? <laughs> yeah. Now we're heading into the waxing scene here, Steve. So, oh, well, you tell us how that came about. Uh, well, we we had talked about kind of the pretty woman makeover sequence, and it was distilled down to me getting a chest wax. And I insisted that if we were in fact going to do that, that it really happened. That uh, I we well, I'd never hacky if it was fake. Well, I thought so. If it's fake, you're doing hitch. But you exactly. told <laughs> you said it wouldn't hurt them. Well, I you lied to me. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Come on, this is the one right here. Right. Hi, how are you? So this is your first time getting. Bite? So I remember that the the woman said that it would hurt less. If we shaved a little bit of your hair, Steve. But I refused. You refused because you wanted it to hurt. I wanted, I wanted it to hurt as much as humanly possible. So what we did is we put four cameras on Steve, and just did it. Oh my god! I feel like there was even more than. Now, how did you feel right before it happened? Were you freaking out a little bit? I was freaking out and just trying to (laughs) not show that I was freaking out. I was trying to be as calm as someone who has never been waxed would be. And uh, and uh, someone who yeah. doesn't know the pain they're about to experience. How's this heart? Look, look in Steve's eyes. Look in Steve's eyes. Just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it takes Man. a second for the pain to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gosh. Now, we had no dialogue here. I just said scream and then curse and then apologize. And that's real. That's the hunk of hair. Oh, my oh. God. Did you know what you were going to say? Did you plan any of this? No, out? I didn't. No, I don't think any of this could have been planned. The Kelly Clarkson line was just murder. Where did that come from, the Kelly Clarkson? <laughs> Please give me some. You wish she's doing it, she's saying. You know what? This woman, they auditioned women who were actresses slash waxers. waxers. And there's a lot of them, oddly enough. She was good. <laughs> she, they used to be waitresses, now they're now waxers. waxers. It's the new thing in L.A. She did I a can't very get waxed without getting a yeah. strip from someone. <laughs> <laughs> That Look at how clean it is, though. It's nice yeah. and smooth. Beautiful job, really. How long did it take to grow back? Uh, seven weeks or so. You, I ended up shaving my entire chest down so it would kind of grow back at the same yeah. time. Okay. Now, you know what? Like, you go to these salons or whatever, and you can ask the... Well, you won't see her again, but if you ask this woman, she'll tell you that usually they do, like, half of that. Half of that strip that you're doing, you're doing, like, the whole skirt throw. I got a weak stomach. That's all I can really take. All right, I'll see y'all. Jay, Jay, be tough, Andy. You got it. Where did Jay go? He went to throw up. And then when we were doing it, we didn't really have a plan of where we would rip. And so we did this one. We just were trying to do different areas. And then I, who noticed that it was turning into a happy face? Someone, Paul did. <laughs> Paul said, "Oh, finish the happy face." <laughs> no, Paul called him a man, a man of lantern. Is what Paul called him. That was his murder. He also kind of looks a little bit like, um, you know, Dead Presidents. Yeah, you know, like, like the, the movie Dead Presidents, like or, that, yeah, or the Scream mask too. But definitely a, a pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a shot coming up where they do a close-up of, like, the middle of my chest, and you can see the blood the bubbling oh, to the man. surface. Oh, God. oh, the nipple. <laughs> now, you know what? You're supposed to put some sort of oil on the nipple before you wax, because otherwise you really can... Remove them, the nipple. Remove yeah. the nipple. Yeah. And no, oh, there's, that's the blood. There's the blood. No, and and she, she doesn't she's touching really, it. She's no, she's just getting she, her hand right in it. No, she, oh. she cupped her hand oh. to avoid contracting HIV. You see how she cupped so her hand like that? Did they use the oil on you? <laughs> they weren't going to. But they did. The oil was an afterthought. They demanded nipple oils. Whoa. Now my, now, my friend writer Nick Stoller was there that day, and I, I believe he came up with Manolan. I think he did, yes. Oh, you have right. to give it to him. How many takes are you doing that? 
Uh, we did all of this. It, it was two takes of the real ripping. Yo, oh. peep, peep the shirt, though. Look. Whoa. That's what's funny is in this scene, it gets a lot of big laughs, but that shot of the bloody shirt gets the biggest laugh yeah, it, of everything. It just, people will laugh at what you show them. <laughs> oh, That's what ouch. I think. I waxed my back for the film. I don't know uh, if you're aware of that. It wasn't even on camera. Yeah, it would be a big back right you know, now showing you a big black back. I wasn't very nice That's true. Past but no, I actually did for the dance years. sequence. Sure, Judd, actually, you no, told no, me no, to wax I, my I, back. I really boring. Mistaken. Why? I, I for the end, well, we were going to shoot something with me in the tub with Elizabeth. Wait a minute. And oh, that's then we right. cut that. Shauna waxed your back. Shauna waxed my back, our producer. Well, it actually was a lot like the movie where the makeup woman uh, started doing it, and I was in so much pain that she refused to finish and left, and then Shauna had to finish, laughing more hysterically than I maybe have seen anyone laugh in my entire life. They're laughing. Look at that. Uh, this, was, this was also a scene where there was uh, much discussion uh, about uh, serial killing. Oh yes, much. Yeah, he screams it. Kind of. There's and, a and, and now, in that box. now there's the, the we sell your stuff on the eBay store. We were scouting this location, which is in the valley in Encino, and we just saw that store. That's really the store. Yeah. And then we rewrote the movie to match our location. <laughs> that is lazy. This <laughs> we are geographical writers. <laughs> now, Seth, there was, there, there was a whole run here about being a novelist. Yes, I, it's a whole subplot that was cut out of the movie. Uh, and if you look, when you cut to me in my apartment later, I'm at, I am at a typewriter. And I naively actually outlined an entire novel and put it up on cards in my apartment, and you just can't see them in the shot that was used in the end. It was a good story about a guy who goes to Iraq, uh, and he, it's all because of his father issues, and he turns out to be gay. And it was called, uh, it had a funny name. I can't remember what it was. It was like Burnt Heart or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm not an arrogant prick, Andy. Okay. Now, this idea of talking in questions uh, was uh, you know, taken from uh, the, uh, yeah, like a, a famous actor who remained nameless that uh, is charming to the ladies. And, and someone pointed out to me that his shtick was he never says anything, that it's all questions. And then that's why that's there. I can't say, but... Are you done? Listen. Donnie Wahlberg? No, yeah, no I, I, can't Donnie say, I can't say. I can say the real name. Is it Jeremy Irons? Oh, <laughs> how did you know? We're gonna say every name but the real name. Now. It's Gary <laughs> Grant. It's, 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 I can't say. It's got to be Vince Vaughn. No, it's it's. You can guess. Is it Joe Piscopo? No, it's an actor. You say. Yes, it's Tom Cruise. Wait, you didn't didn't. What well, you, didn't, didn't, well, you didn't see Johnny Dangerously? <laughs> no, was he in Johnny Dangerously? No, he, he was, was in the one with Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito. Wise. He was. He wasn't yeah. Johnny Dangerously. Yeah, he he was the one. His, his whole thing was, you know, somebody called me that once. Once. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Keaton, I think, was in Johnny mm -hmm. Dangerously. Yeah. 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 And it was directed by Amy Heckerling. That's right. And you're about to make a movie with her. Mm -hmm. And oh. your female lead is? Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Nice. nice. Oh. Do you have sex scenes? I don't know. Have you read the script? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, you know, uh, not really. You know, there, but there's some like kind of some kissing scenes. Yeah, you have a I'm, stunt I'm penis. So, I'm so, <laughs> I'm, I don't know. It's just a weird and I'm kind of nervous about it. I would be nervous about yeah. it. <laughs> I get nervous just talking about Michelle Pfeiffer. Well, yeah, you can hear it in my voice. Yeah. I am trembling a bit. <laughs> the whole DVD just went to a dead stop. <laughs> under pressure, you're under. So uh, yeah. her. And we're all around a table right now, and you're all looking at me. And yeah. um, <laughs> More margaritas. <laughs> well, Seth is about to do a movie with Jessica Lange. Yes, I am. Oh, that's my we have four sex scenes. She is very famous. Yo, yo, this was scripted, right? Did this section right here? Or just straight up improv. Uh, this is scripted, except for this run about do it yourself, and that's all. Which is an improv. Brilliant. But Elizabeth had a very funny improv, uh, and I don't even know how we got to this concept where she told him about her dream. Oh, the ocean. Yeah. yeah how did that go, Seth? It's like she was lying on a beach in her dream, and it felt like the whole ocean was going down on her. Was that? Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Which is dirty. Like, <laughs> that is very dirty. And this scene also has one of my, I think, favorite. Uh, jokes 
our favorite lines in it, which is um, Seth saying, just be David Caruso in Jade. And it just makes me laugh so hard. I think that's... And you're the only one. <laughs> that's my favorite scene right there. That was it. That's one of those jokes that you know no one will like, but you like it so much it doesn't matter. Hello! <laughs> How you doing? Yo, this shit on? is mad funny, dog. <laughs> the, uh, this is a Catherine uh, Keener. Now, how is it working with Catherine Keener, Steve? I mean, the thing that seems funny about it is... You, you well, know, she's, she's a real actress. What What is she doing in this movie? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that the fact that you're intimidated by her made... The, the, that's like natural to your relationship with her, like your character's relationship. She is to her. scary as hell as an actress. She's uh, because she came off a Sean Penn movie and a Daniel Day Lewis movie, and then she was in a Steve Carell movie. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't like Sidney Pollock her last director, yes, and yes. then <laughs> and then to Apatow. And then I would always mention, is this how Pollock would do it? Yeah. <laughs> And she very seriously would say no. <laughs> with no humor behind her voice. No. Well, she was, I can't even imagine her with no humor because she laughed the entire time she was on the set. Mm -hmm. She was, was by like, far, she joke. was far and away our first choice for that character. And oh. and once we thought of her, there was really no one else we had in mind. Hey, man, you got a big she, box uh, of porn for you. She was very lucky to get the part. <laughs> she was. <laughs> well, it, it, it seemed like, you know, having Catherine around grounded the whole movie and, and the, the performances in the movie because she was not fucking around and she uh, she didn't approach it like a comic and it, it seemed to help you uh, act with her and then create a real relationship I I concur like when you looked like you guys were having when you had sex it looked like you were having sex <laughs> no it didn't I don't think that would have no it didn't that wouldn't have worked if we had Imogene Coca <laughs> <laughs> we weren't really the generation, generation is that <laughs> of all the women I'm I made so out with in this movie Catherine Keener was the best wait my wife is still there no no wait what about a transvestite yeah. wait a minute there was a transvestite in this movie That's no right. It's coming, it's coming. Hey, uh, I'm so glad I didn't hire Ruth Buzzy but, uh, to play her. I know. Oh. <laughs> oh. You know, but those last minute choices were <laughs> important. So she this is. She wasn't available. Now, this is a great uh, prop department joke that they wrote Boner Jams. I think Rudd wrote Boner Jams. Did you? If I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, I wrote Boner Jams 03, and then I realized after we shot it that I was upset that I came up with 03 because my shirt actually says 03. Yeah, and how did you think so of that? So I just started thinking, like, maybe I just really dug the year 2003. <laughs> <laughs> when you and your girl went Well, no, because we concluded, Rod, that the year you were with Amy. It That's was two right. years ago. Yeah, that was a happy so, accident. Oh, you're yeah. still living in 2003. Now, do yeah. you have a Boner Jams tape, or is that where did that come from? I just, I don't know. I thought it would be funny. Like, I'm, like he just seems like a guy that's in like mixtapes. I don't know. <laughs> because the uh, when uh, where that originally came from when we were shooting Heavyweights, I know you've all seen it. Yeah. Uh, Disney comedy. Uh, the, one of the actors in it is an actor named uh, Dave Bo, and he, we were all sitting around this house that we were renting while we were living there. And one day he just said, you guys want to watch porn? And he, and he puts in this tape, and it's like a compilation of his favorite sex scenes. And we were horrified. That I was, used to have that was his boner jams. I totally <laughs> had a boner jams. Uh, but it was all taped off like, like HBO kind of super channel, as we call it in Canada, which is hilarious. And uh, like, let's say there was 40 clips of nude scenes on the compilation. 38 of them had Lorenzo Lamas in them, uh, <laughs> which was very weird. So it was more of a Red Shoes diary. It kind of was. It was of. soft. It was a little soft. It was almost like that scene with Jerry we, I mean, sitting around and coming up with uh, porn titles. and. Oh, yeah. Porn. Well, because the funny porn title has been done That's to death, I yeah. would say. But the yeah. funny name for a compilation of right. porn, that's yes. new. Now, this whole I the sequence is, was Gary Shandling's idea. We did a, a table read, and then we were pitching around ideas, and everyone was saying, what are you going to do about masturbation? Are you going to talk about whether or not he masturbates, and which leads in all sorts of disgusting uh, directions? And I just kept pitching the full hand on cock. Jack off the Rama. But no one, no one was with me on it. Let's just show it. And Shandling said, "Go uh, masturbation preparations." Oh my God, yo, you look like you're preparing yourself. <laughs> like, like, I don't know, decapitation, <laughs> the Last Supper. I don't know.
But you got to turn the, the picture of your dad around before you masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is Space Nuts starring Stormy, who did a much longer bit that is on this DVD. Um, it's You're about to see something that is not in the movie that I honestly think might shock you, and we've been debating whether or not this next joke goes too far. Shauna is not a fan of it. I think it's the funniest one. So he fast-forwards past the dirty parts. Now, this is the new part. This isn't in the movies. Let's just watch it and see how we react. I'm ready. If we think it's funny. <laughs> now, do we think that's funny? Do we think it's funny? Hey, that's a good thing. See, Shauna? That's comedy with this. That's good. Yo, you guys can hear this shit? Yeah. yeah. Dog, pump my shit up. <laughs> pump it up. Yo, I want to hear it too, yo. You want a technical person to come in the room right now? Yeah, nope. <laughs> Is that. You ever watch, like, Primetime Live when they take hard to be funny with your tits into a hotel room and show you all this I think, Storm, Honestly, I think Stormy did a very good job. She did. Yeah. I do too. I don't know why. And then there was a picture of me with Stormy, and 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 Leslie got mad at me when she saw it. Yeah. <laughs> She's still mad on some level. <laughs> what were you uh, giving her vagina direction? <laughs> she hasn't even seen that one. Oh no! <laughs> Come on, Seth. But she saw like a chamber picture. Because <laughs> there is a fine line between doing a joke about pornography and presenting pornography. And being involved, or as I learned in my little dinner with Stormy, being in a pornographic movie while you think you're shooting a little comedy sketch for a DVD. <laughs> now, Jane, this was cut out, but it's in the the Clever. DVD. Go that deep. This is great now we like this. This is a. Uh, In a New York minute. You would fuck him. Absolutely. The discussion of will she wants to, does she want to have sex with Andy? Um, I don't know. I have a turkey. There's also a very funny run about you buying pot from Seth. Yeah, that was funny. Great place. And you wanted to watch Gandhi after you get high. <laughs> That's your whole thing. <laughs> Who doesn't? Exactly. I know Shelly does. Yes. <laughs> What's going on? <coughs> uh, this is our third day of shooting. You remember this, Steve? Uh, vaguely. I remember the shirt. I'll never forget the graphic of no, the... Uh, don't ignore me. I know what this is. You had to do a lot of improvising for two days. We had a lot of very, very funny women come in to do our our data palooza. We've given you all the advice we have like to give. Every hysterically funny woman in town. Now, I actually went speed dating as research for this with our producer, Shauna. And, uh, my nick, my, what moved my speed dating alias was Seth Rovin. Oh, oh clever. very clever, very clever. And uh, now you found out that women did like you. Well, no, what I found out was that the fake version of my life, which was that I work for Nextail, is far more attractive than the real version of my life. <laughs> I got a lot more dates that way. And did you say that everyone there was a second grade teacher? Yeah, everyone there was a second grade English teacher. And one woman recognized me from Freaks and Geeks and apologized to me after she recognized me because she was like really like she thought I would be humiliated that I was like speed dating and that like she knew who I was. I, I'm sorry, I know who you are. <laughs> it's okay. Like it's seeing sorry. Johnny Depp and speed dating. Exactly, yeah, exactly like that. It's not like I played an attractive guy. <laughs> it's because I was on TV. And you are. And that didn't tell us who that is, Steve. Mindy. Look, I'm gonna be real honest with you. Girl, so Mindy funny. Kaling is uh, one of the writers and uh, actresses on the NBC version of The Office. Very talented, uh, lovely young woman. And that's Mo Collins as Gina. Now that's Paul Rudd's joke. That is it? another Rudd joke, Gina. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Rudd went deep on this movie. He really did. Because I, I cut out one uh, joke. Boner jams and Gina. Yeah. <laughs> I only cut out one of your jokes in this entire movie, and you were enraged at me. I, you know, I, I thought it was funny. It was the one thing that I did kind of fight you on. <laughs> <laughs> that you said. It, what, tell them what the joke was. Well, the whole thing, that whole section about uh, I know you're gay. We were Seth and I were just goofing around, and we and I think the crew was getting upset because they thought we were. You know, we just started doing it. There was a lot of times while we were shooting where we got the distinct impression that the crew was thinking, "Annoying, like, what the fuck are these people doing right now?" And, and then <laughs> We've been shooting for nine minutes. <laughs> None and then of this is going to end up in the movie. And then one of mine was, you know, uh, how I know you're gay because you have a you have a crush on Ray Fines. <laughs> and I just thought that Ray Fines was an odd person to I mean nothing is Ray Fines just seemed like it was a funny person to have a crush on but there's another Your reference to him meme. there's another reference to him because you say uh, you like that movie 
This, maybe I have the crush on Ray Fine. No, I can't what? get him out of my mind. Wait a minute, it's a woman's nipple on maybe, screen right maybe. now, and we're, we're talking not about Ray. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know, Ray Fine's nipples. <laughs> now, Jane, do you think that is too far? The no. nipple joke. Oh no, no, no! I think it's wonderful. Seth, tell tell them how I pitched you this joke. The nipple joke? Yeah. Uh, it was just that the nipple peeks out. If I read, did you actually show me your nipple? As no, no, but <laughs> <laughs> so for five minutes before I told Seth the joke, I this just went, is the funniest thing I've ever thought I of in my entire life. It was this actually. No, that happened two times with the boner in the morning when he pees with the boner. That had at least a twenty-minute precursor before I actually heard what the joke was. <laughs> Seth, you're not going to believe it, man. Just sit down. Just get ready. Are you ready? You don't look ready. I don't think you're ready. You say you're ready, but I don't think you're ready for how funny this is going to be. Shit. The nipple pops out. Yeah. <laughs> it's so simple. Yeah, yeah. it's never been done. Yeah, I know. Have you ever seen that? It's never happened. Uh, <laughs> all right, this is a scene. I love this. Yeah, this right. Weird. God, <laughs> I've been looking for that speed dating card. Thank you so now, much. Now, Leslie, uh, actually wrote that one girl this, like she was the idea of uh, being really aggressive yeah, and uh, talking in the uh, oh, African-American so slang was Leslie's idea. She was oh, on, yeah, on the set good. that day, and it just set the wheels a moving. Steve, this is really, this is, that scene, that scene really, my whole, and this thing, that's very, very fun. I love talking like that, too. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the thing. It's fun that's, for you. Why does only Romney get to talk that way? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wayne Fetterman, very funny yeah, comedian. Yeah. I saw him, uh, it was funny, I was at somewhere where they were doing stand-up recently, and like the guy introduces, like, our next comic is in The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Uh, and I was like, bullshit, who's in The 40-Year-Old Virgin? That's dead that I saw him. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. And then it made me want to start doing comedy again, just so I could use that. It just sounded good. Stop with the Inquisition. That gets a laugh when they introduce me now. It's like a joke. He's in The 40-Year-Old Virgin. People laugh. They don't believe no there is such a thing. Yeah. So, so if you take it out of context of the, from the film, it's just you're in a Ford, in a yeah. forty year old. Yeah. 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 Wow, way to go, man! Yeah. That's yeah. pretty impressive. Why, yeah. Why do you wait that long? Is he coming on stage with him, or what are they yeah. doing? That's actually. Uh, Put your hoe on a leash. That's <laughs> pretty rough, yeah, Steve. This, this <laughs> know what I say in? This was fun. That's uh, daring acting. That is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my yeah. parents will oh, be I proud. <laughs> what's, what's daring is that my entire forearm was firmly nestled in Paul's choda for a good... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's a choda? It's the little area between his balls and his ass. The taint. Uh, the taint. The choda. The perineum. The perineum. Paul, did you have that buck wax? Yeah, right. I think he did. He <laughs> waxed right this. You, you <laughs> waxed the for this, right? No. Choda. No, that's all. That's all me. But look, right here. Because you, te- <laughs> you just wiped off your hand. You came in. You rushed. You 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 literally bum rushed me. I bum rushed you. And you tagged me to, you tagged me to the ground, but, you know, because it wasn't. Uh, you, you, you things happen. Your forearm. Yeah. No, that's really the girl. That's the girl from Traffic, and Ooh. just as a favor, she was an extra. Thing. Eric and Christian. Yeah, it was nice of her. Oh shit. That wasn't her, oh, but she looks God. like her. <laughs> <laughs> now, we need to like really facilitate things a bit more. Yo, Andy. Yeah. Hey, there were some jokes there about let's get him a whore. Let's get him a whore. But we figured why ruin the joke. And we get him. And, and, and then Robin says a good whore, and you go whatever, whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. My fifteen bucks buys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pitching five. That's all. So I'm you know this sequence was um, something that we, we we trimmed down where uh, he gets the, the prostitute and it turns out to be a man. And there's a very funny long scene on this DVD. But uh, at this point, we had so many uh, pretty women in the movie that the second you saw. This transvestite, you knew. We, we always wanted you to slowly realize it, but it seems somewhat instant, don't you think, Steve? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it was a bit of a, a suspension of disbelief, too. Now, what scene is this transvestite in exactly? This right one. Watch the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> With the day I auditioned, it was me and all uh, many transvestites. <laughs> Just, I was confused. How many numbers did he get? <laughs> I have to say, he it's was striking. Eva, my girlfriend. He this was is Jasmine. Jasmine got on my lap and ground against my crotch during the audition. Oh, I'd like to say that we had every transvestite read with Seth, and they all made a point of jumping on your lap. Yeah, it's because I'm what transvestites call a bear. <laughs> and, uh, that's almost too specific. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Jasmine was uh, was very funny and very. Uh, 
talented and great. And then great. It was very good. <laughs> great job. Get a dick, man. Put up with a lot of our you shit. Even like me? And then gave me a, 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 a dance song that. That That's right. She, she gave recorded us her album. Yeah, her album. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was good, but it's, there were elements of it that scared me. They were a little erotic. It was a little erotic. There was groaning. Hold up. Hold up. Now we did about nine hundred versions of uh, Paul making fun of Matt Damon. <laughs> Yeah. Do you feel like that's going to affect your career in some way? <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to think of what else we what else there was in Well, you called him a cake eater, a right. bit of a Streisand, a, a project, project Faglite. Project, project Faglite, Faglite was one of them. That's right. There was more. You have no proof. There's a montage of them on the DVD. A shoe buffer? Is, is that one? I don't know. I'm going to tell Paula that you're all stealing the recordable CD. Oh, come on. It's nice of Matt Damon to film this for us. We just needed something. And we didn't think you had the balls to do it yourself. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, watch this. Yo, Andy, it's just CDs, man. That's a thirst. I remember I would hang out in this room and, and just think, God, I'd love to have this at, like, in my house. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I almost got killed walking across the street during this take. Because that wasn't a sunk car, that this Volvo. Was, that was a real car. Ventura <laughs> Boulevard was closed, and there were precision drivers crossing the street, and, and their job was to avoid me. And there was one, what I later found out was termed a bogey. A bogey, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that had gotten past police lines. Oh, and God. I was told about 15 minutes after, a very, very, I, I thought, God, these guys are great. That one guy <laughs> came within six inches <laughs> was even of hitting me. Like, like, man, that, that car really <laughs> almost hit me. These guys oh, are talented. <laughs> <laughs> and... And later, our first AD said, well, I hate to say you almost died. <laughs> it was a bogey. Oh, Jonah. Here's Jonah. Jonah. Jonah, tell us. Walk us through it, Jonah. Walk us through it. <laughs> All right, guys, here it is. I get on the mic, bro. Get on the mic. Get on the mic. I was just scared. Now I'm not scared. Right here. Yeah, now I'm gone. <laughs> you got scared? Were you intimidated by Steve? I, I, I was really, this was the scariest day of film work I've ever done in my life to this day. Because we kept making you improvise in front of strangers and Catherine Keener? No, I was just a big fan and I was very intimidated because it was like, I like doing improv comedy and you guys are very people that I've watched a lot of their improv comedy work and stuff, so... But you came to play. I came to play really ball, Judd. That's actually how I found out about you, is our casting director, Allison Jones, said, this guy no, worships you guys. Yeah. you got to well, let him come I mean, in. I, 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 saw like, like I saw you at a movie. like that. I saw you at a movie, I remember, and you totally sweet-talked me. I definitely and I was like, don't. this guy, Jonah, is really cool to me. But your ass kissing worked. Yeah, it totally yeah. did. Jonah, I just like, I, I, another one of my favorite parts is just Jonah's stare at Steve. Yeah. It's like, yeah. just... It just and you laugh. There's a little smile like you... You totally laugh. Yo, day. yo. Well, I need to know who came up with the concept of you wearing this shirt right here, dog. What is that? I don't know. They, and it was just... That was literally... I was getting dressed for the scene, and, and I, there were some options of things that, that they said, like, you know, what, what do you want to wear? And one of them was a T-shirt with my own face on. I said, I think I'll wear that. I have no idea. I think that's that's all wardrobe department. Is that Deborah McGuire? I think that was Deborah McGuire. Was that an actual mugshot of the yourself? picture of you? Is that so was. Funny. That, I think that was. I think that picture was taken when we were trying to get our ID. Yeah, like screen tests or whatever. Smart tech ID cards. Yeah. Now this whole uh, idea of you know how I know you're gay is a total. Improv that came after like 15 minutes of, of other improv, other improv, and then it just, it happened, and then we stopped and reshot the entire scene when we realized that that was the funny <laughs> we part. Went back and got a master of it, <laughs> and then you guys improvised like 10 straight minutes of uh, versions. I was especially impressed with the. Uh, the sourdough bread puts made spinach in a sourdough. How did that one go? Uh, I know you're gay because you made a, a spinach dip in a loaf of sourdough bread once. <laughs> like, why is that just in your head at all? My mother used to always make it, and it was delicious. And it, I, I would make it myself, but out of fear of being called gay, I never have. So I thought I would project those fears onto Paul's character. <laughs> and there was also there was also t yeah I know you're gay because you TiVo the Christopher Lowell show, yeah. and everyone and everyone on uh, uh, on the crew was like, Who, who's Christopher? <laughs> We basically I knew. <laughs> we did every variation that everyone yeah. called everyone gay at some point in the movie, uh, <laughs> and then we cut some of them out. There was a big run where you said that called, Jay's gay. I called Rom gay for waxing his chest. I think he's gay. <laughs> 
But I didn't know you were supposed to be gay until Ramani told me. That's actually kind of a problem because that you're gay. I, I said, oh, that's gay. I actually called <laughs> David gay when I was when uh, Steve told me that David told him he, didn't, he wasn't supposed to have any. He didn't have to have any sex at the club. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I actually right. referred to David as a faggot then. So I think we pretty much covered everybody. Basically, we're all 14 years old. Exactly. <laughs> See, the real hero behind this mill is homophobia. You know, I know you're gay. And, uh, <laughs> I saw you make a spinach. Dip we're making up a. a, 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 a Positive points. <laughs> that line is hilarious. Now Rob's the only one that can hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Who got the game chair? The video game chair. I got the drum kit, but you—they said you broke it. And I can't get it to work. There was that drum kit. Now we we had that was, so we took out the Ray Fine joke and put in the Asia joke, and uh, and then we put Asia. An Asia song at the end of the movie, and we asked uh, the audience at one of the screenings if they knew that Asia sang that song, and no one knew who Not Asia one was. Literally knew. <laughs> no one knew. In 1990, people had never heard of the band Asia, but we went with it anyway. I wonder how they, if they would, were familiar with Yamo B there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Since we paid Michael McDonald so much money, can we sing his songs right now? <laughs> I can't actually sing the songs I have to pay for, but I can go. <laughs> that's just as good. <laughs> you mean that's just as bad? Okay. The first two concerts I went to in, in my life was uh, the Doobie Brothers. Both of them? Both of them. You One double team two. Doobie Brothers. God, were they... Steve, what was your first concert you ever went to? He did not laugh at Jethro Tull. <laughs> nice. Wow. Oh, that was I that was going to be my first but then I had to have my appendix taken out. That's right. My oh, friend. you missed he skewered weather balloons with a flute. That's amazing. <laughs> my friend Evan went to a Jethro Tull concert alone 2 years ago. <laughs> 2 years ago. Yeah, 2 years ago went to a Jethro Tull concert by himself. My foot my, my foot is Ravi Shankar. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> He's a comedian. <laughs> no, I'm getting new confidence. Laura, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Use. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. No use. Right. Yeah. Now, there was a moment in the, in the shooting, Jerry, where you and Romney started using uh, expletives with each other as part of the scene and using the N-word and all sorts of interesting variations oh, yeah. as part of an improv. And then all the other actors and the extras looked scared, and some extras left. Did we, yeah, we had lots of extras oh. quit throughout this movie. Yeah. Um, some of the extras he brought, they all look like um, they on 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 um, death row. <laughs> well, hey, 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 dude. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that was my dad and my yeah. hey. <laughs> my dad and my mom, bro. Hey. <laughs> People didn't know you guys were kidding and got really scared. I know, yeah. yeah. You know that's it, true. It definitely created a little vibe in there yeah. that I wasn't really comfortable with myself. I mean, I was cool with it because I know yeah. we was joking yeah. around. But I don't, I don't I think Jerry was joking. I was. Yeah. Jerry knew we were away, joking. Yeah. Like the like the trip from where we were acting to Video Village. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The tension between there it was like walking through a windstorm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The running fight we have through. Here. This was Catherine Tina's first day, and her first scene. That was great. Happy birthday. Yeah. And she was actually nervous when we started filming. I know why she was nervous. This scene was not written. <laughs> It, ev it evolved. <laughs> it evolved during the day. <laughs> she had to shoot this scene and the scene where you guys say, let's not have sex on the same day, her first day. That's tough. Yeah, that's right. And then this is an improv, her kissing you. Look at that. That's when you knew you were in for it. It kind of looked like an air kiss on this little laundry. It did, it did. It kind of looked like an air kiss. No, I'm making out. <laughs> now, how did you feel having all these sex scenes? I liked it a lot. <laughs> it was really fun. I, I won't lie. Do you say that because there's just no chance your wife's ever going to listen to she this She will commentary? never tap into this part of the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> now, are, but seriously, are you uncomfortable doing that or no? Not at all. And I've never done it before. I've never like kissed anyone on camera. Not, not even Dana Carvey? On the I Dana might Carvey have kissed show? him a little bit. <laughs> um, but... Uh, all the women in this movie just went for it, and just there was no. Wow. There's no know. filter, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, every it was very easy. I have to say, it was kind of just fun, and uh, I'm, I'd like to date a lot of them. <laughs>
<laughs> did you did you deliberately screw up some of the scenes so take the takes over and over? Did you try to do that? Oh, I would ask for di- takes, whether we needed them or not. Oh, no. I just wanted to go back and do more. <laughs> Very exciting. Very oh, exciting. Got him. How many women did you kiss all together in the movie? It's like nine or something like that. Let's go. We shot more than we needed. <laughs> that's a common mistake to put a condom over your balls. Also, I do that. I think that's a pretty. Uh, I fully just do it. I don't, not as a mistake. Oh. That way, <laughs> that's like a Romney kind of. <laughs> no, Romney, honestly, and I don't mean this in any weird way. I'm not implying anything, but like, do you use a Magnum? He just nodded his head. I mean, you can't see. Yeah, you know what? I'll be straight up and down. I've used Magnums for the most part, but over like the last couple of years, I've gone through this. He makes his own condoms out condom of goat intestines. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just, I don't. I, I used to love the Magnums, but they just. I don't know. I, I've gotten to a point where it's like you I know they don't taste as good as they used. <laughs> <laughs> so what, who are you going with these days? Um, I, I'm going. I'm going with abstinence and the Lord. <laughs> this is a funny line. That guy. That line when he said. Coming up. Now this shows you know what Seth did on this movie because Seth wrote 25 jokes for this One young line. young Jordan Masterson. <laughs> yes. And uh, teach me. And, <laughs> and I hate to say it, nine. he came he up thought of that way. Yeah, 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 I know. So that shows what I did in the movie. Hey, this scene's back. What do you know, Judd? You put your scene back in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the way this thing is lit. Is it the saddest, like, shot in, in the whole movie? <laughs> well, how much of the medicine have you taken, sir? Uh, I just redid my voice, so what you're hearing right now won't be the, the voice you're hearing. Oh, did you? I worked on my accent a little oh, better. No, you did it, did you? Because yeah, I was just doing it off camera. I didn't mean to use it. And I, I did commit to the Indian voice. <laughs> it does waver. I should have got Hank Azaria. Yeah. <laughs> that guy doesn't mean me. I'm sorry. This right. is actually one of the first jokes we thought of for the movie that he would call the Viagra hotline to complain about his boner, and then he has to tell them that he hasn't taken any. Not you personally. After nine hours of an erection. Well, you know, you could have sex. Okay. That terrible yep. accent. That's but uh, <laughs> but I like your voice. Uh, yeah, that's not I like what you do in it because you're nice and you're patient and you're there's, something, patient. there's something really sweet about. <laughs> but he has this like this very, not a very low level of enthusiasm at the same time, which comes across really very real, you know. Mm-hmm. On your wrist, and that will focus the brain elsewhere, and you will lose your erection. Really, that'll work. Take your finger and flick. The testicles. <laughs> 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 it's not unpleasant, and it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take your finger and flick your That one line, I feel like, was without an accent. I feel That's why I just looped that. Line. Okay. <laughs> I fell out of character. You did. <laughs> Tough, Judd. See, it's not so easy, yeah, yeah. huh? I learned a lot about what you guys do. You're on our side. <laughs> Now, this is a scene I never thought we would ever put in the movie. Wow, did you think, this is... Did you think this was just one for us? <laughs> well, the... No! No! I noticed that. I'm sorry. Oh! oh, oh. What a, it was a great rig. <laughs> the, the rig, the, the penis, the urine rig was... Uh, there was a guy off screen, off camera, who was just kind of the, the urine wrangler for that scene. He was. Now, the, the first scene, too, right? We had a lot of urine wranglers on the set. Yeah. We did. Now, this scene... We went through a few. Uh, we had so many. We had a lot of guys come in to read for the manager. And then at some point we said, I think women are underrepresented in the store and in the, in the movie. And Jane, you came in, and this is all improvised. And then when you left, I literally sent the tape to a transcriber, had them type it out, and I put it in the script. And that's, it's a good thing we hired you. That would have been really awkward. <laughs> <when> you- <laughs> <laughs> There must be yeah. people who auditioned and improvised stuff who have lines in the movie and do not even know it. Oh, yeah. There's we, no I, doubt about it. We stole from everybody. We totally <laughs> now, have you and Steve ever worked together before? Yeah, we did Second City back in the late 80s, early yes, 90s. Yes, we did. Oh, yes. And actually, having you audition for the movie was, again, my wife Nancy's idea. Oh, she's We were worried. talking about who could happy, potentially yeah. do it, and she said, Jane. Oh, that's and sweet. Well, my well, wife well, thought of Life of Illusion. <laughs> My wife just needlepoints. 
My wife makes a good chicken pot pie. Mine doesn't. Now, what does this mean in Spanish? It means whenever they clean my room, I can't find anything. Where are you going with such haste uh, to a football game? Oh, I love From a level one it is very class. Se- it's true. Very <laughs> sexy. I want to go see the movie in East L.A. and see I know, the show there. kills there. <laughs> You know when I knew that like we were a real movie coming out when I saw a billboard covered in graffiti. Yeah. That's when I was like, if people oh, disrespect right. us, that means that we're really a yeah. movie, you know. I saw that on Beverly. Yeah, right yeah. on Beverly. Uh-huh. It's a block what does it away say? from my house. Right. Does it say like I'm gonna kill Steve Carell? It does, right. and it has his home address oddly <laughs> enough written on it. Oh my god, which is strange. <laughs> It was a disaster. We've been defaced. Really? This was the last day. We shot this on the last day. I'm very drunk in this scene. I never wanted to tell you this. And, it, and it's good that the scene turned out kind of funny, but I'm faced off that whiskey that you bought me while we oh, shot this scene. <laughs> I'm so lit right here. I was falling asleep standing up. Because I bought everyone scotch, and we were all drinking it all day. Yeah. <laughs> and this was also the scene that we hit our one millionth foot of film That's during right. and was sent uh, champagne by the good uh, people at Technical, I believe. I think Romney really does look super drunk here. Yeah. Because there's a close up of you and your eyes are really good. <laughs> that was so I was drunk. I drank like, first of all, I started out damn near a vegetarian when I was doing this film. And you're 1% body fat. Yeah, exactly. yeah, and I remember by like, like I don't know, week four, I just remember Leslie going, you're eating a pastry? And I was like, oh, shit. It was pretty much downhill from there. Was that the last No. Oh, that was true, though. And that was something I never knew, that if you if you shoot a million feet of film, which you actually did, Judd. Yes. Uh, On the last that's called, day. That's called terror of failure. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the, the film company will buy champagne for the crew and the cast. So they, we did. We stopped production and they brought out yeah. some champagne for everybody. But the reason we did is is because I love it. I loved working on this. I love the way you, you do it where you just keep going and then just try something different and we just won't cut. Oh, that gun is good at that. I'm always sure you're going to think of something better than, than I. <laughs> you know, Paul, we did that before when we did the Chateau. Mm-hmm. But for some reason or the other, I just still felt like this one was a lot... For some reason, it came across as if there was just. I felt like we were still within a structure, a, a bit more so than we were doing the chateau. Well, know? the chateau, we didn't even have a script. Right. Okay. That's. Right. I mean, we did have this like to work from. Yeah. So it was. Uh, well, that's how how we uh, thought of uh, of Romney, is uh, I got a bunch of reels to look at directors, and one of the reels was the movie The Chateau, and and it was Paul and uh, Romney improvising an entire movie, and so when we were trying to figure out how to fill these parts, we thought, well. Oh, no, Paul and Romney seem to have some chemistry together. Maybe I can tap into oh, that and use it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I think you saved your movie. <clears throat> now this guy uh, Lee, he thought he I, was he was funny. I mean, he thought I was the director and you <laughs> were one of the. I spoke him today. Did you? Yeah, because we we we've been you know talking since the movie, and he was actually uh, thought the transvestite was a real woman, and he said, Jerry, you know what? I think I'm getting lucky. <sighs> He did. Are you serious? Yes. At the, at the, when we were dancing at the end, he was hitting on the transvestite? Yeah, I'm, and then... What do you think his then, move is? Then, and then I said, you know what? <laughs> I said, you know, it's a he. He said, oh, fuck, man. <laughs> Yo, he was disappointed. Y- y'all got to show me when this transvestite comes up in this movie, all right? <laughs> You're still we looking. Can, we're not going to tell you, Ron. <laughs> we already passed it up. It's over. Sorry, I didn't tell you I had kids. <laughs> yeah, what was that about? Gosh, you know, that really surprised me. <laughs> now, this is a tricky scene because it's the first scene where your character is really like a man. And I was always worried that... What, that I couldn't be a man? (laughs) (laughs) This is like when we're pulling out of Hermit Guy, and was it too confident for this person, but... It's it's like he's only comfortable with her. Because it's perfect. She's magical. Yeah, she brings out the best in you. Now, my friend uh, my friend Andy Stitzer uh, from high school, uh, I took his name, because it's like a great sounding name, and then when uh, we were making the movie, it was on the internet that his name was the name of the character in the movie, and he was not pleased. And I had to call him and say, I'm not, I'm not making fun of you, I'm just... I'm just, it's just a great name, and uh, and I sent him 
45 DVDs of Born Identity. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and now, what, he, now he loves it. What's funny is that you never, we never actually say Andy Stitzer in the movie, and the whole time we were like, oh, I think we made it. And then we see the first cut of the trailer, and the first words are, Andy Stitzer. <laughs> <laughs> Every commercial starts with that. <laughs> <laughs> and what we should be doing right now is just getting to know each other. But I always name everybody after <laughs> no, you know, people you that you know. But you should, you should call them and tell them. For future reference? For future, for all of you people. But they did that on Seinfeld. There's like they had a friend, George Costanza, and then he sued them. <laughs> really? You bet. And lost. Buddy. Good. <laughs> Good, George. Serve your rights. <laughs> messing with yeah, arts. You know what most guys <laughs> Jonah, what else is happening in your career? <laughs> Me? Hey, baby. I'm, uh... Express how I doing a film right now. Really? Tell us about it. Let's plug it. Uh, really? I don't feel comfortable doing that. But you're working. That's awkward, yeah. Would you say in some way we've, this has catapulted your career into the stratosphere? Definitely. I think, I think this one scene, I, James Cameron called me the other day and was like... I'm going back to the Titanic, man. You want to come with it? For one of the documentaries. Yeah, exactly. He's like, James Cameron lives in the Titanic. Yeah, we need a guy for our eBay store in Titanic 2. Yeah. <laughs> But the funny thing is we hired a magician to help teach Steve a cool magic trick. Oh, yeah, that's right. And then we just didn't get any cool magic trick. And then one day we just went, well, maybe he takes a coin out of her ear and then has a fake ear and pretends to rip her ear off. So we came up with our own magic trick. Exactly. And we paid someone uh, money, and they, they, they weren't Big as good money. as us. Big money. Big money. I, I think my sleight of hand is actually fairly excellent. And yeah, you don't, you you don't do it. <laughs> it's seamless. You don't see me reaching <laughs> for the enormous totally coins. See you. you don't see it in the hand <laughs> right there. Ahead. You don't see it. Wait. You don't see me holding it no. in my <laughs> left hand. You don't see it. <laughs> oh. You don't see that. <laughs> and there it is. Oh my God. See, it is seamless. <laughs> I didn't know the camera was framed that low. <laughs> <laughs> I ripped it off. Remember the first time I ripped a little girl's ear off? (laughs) Yeah, there's something slightly creepy about that. Yeah. Yeah. I ripped your ear off. (laughs) What do you think? Um, Yeah, like half the time. (laughs) That's Chelsea Smith, who was. We liked her uh, as uh, Julia, the daughter, because. She would just laugh and be in the moment. She's a great little kid actress. Yeah, I thought she was really good. And that's Kat Dennings. I gave them both cocaine for their first time. I made sure of it. Welcome to the club, I said. Welcome to Hollywood. Exactly. But, Dad. Okay, this is the... This is the lost novelist story right here. And what were you typing what we cut out? What did you say? Well, this is one, uh, you know, Father, You Never Taught Me How to Love. There was another one that I literally couldn't do without <laughs> laughing, which was, As the men disrobed in the hot Iraqi desert, the sweat, the sand stuck to their glistening sweaty bodies. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Burnt hearts coming out. This, this is another one of the scenes that was supposed to be very short, and then we just stumbled on this idea of, rambling about the different ways you would fuck a grandmother <laughs> and we just took a break we li- i remember taking like a 15 minute yeah, break we did take a break and <laughs> tried to write as many as we could in those 15 minutes it was actually the only time in the entire shoot where i thought okay we have to stop just to write yeah and we never did that before because the lighting was so fast we didn't have time to think no <laughs> i remember the first take of this was maybe the l- worst take of film in the history of uh you know because you like, like Seth, what are you sparking up like I, was that a real well, joint part or? of the joke was that i smoke a joint and from a bong yeah <laughs> and i kept doing this thing where i would uh take a hit of the joint eat an oreo and then blow out the smoke <laughs> But it never came across and then ever send you a check for twelve dollars. I thought it was (laughs) (laughs) for twelve dollars. Oh man! I also like that I'm wearing a Jizza shirt in that scene while listening to the smoothest jazz you've ever heard in your entire life. And you've got like tats on your arm of all these fine ass women. Now this is uh they actually removed the nipples from one of the tattoos. <laughs> this is the uh the second uh, big Jane Lynch hitting on Steve scene. There was also a whole, whole run here Jane wasn't it about you listening to the doobies in your office which was right. sound oh, yeah, yeah. soundproof. 
piping it through. <laughs> no one will hear our screams of ecstasy. No, I don't really know. And you talked a lot about like being into Journey and Fleetwood Mac. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, I went through the whole like late <laughs> 70s kind of rock and roll pop music type thing. Now, Jane, do you prepare? Like, Do you literally sit and think about this character, or you just come and, and you just rock it? I come and I rock it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't write like a 20-page bio. No, 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 I did not. <laughs> I, is, cool. you know, you, oh I love you smelling me. Oh, yeah. That is my <laughs> smelling is <laughs> bust. <laughs> now, do you bring that in in the morning? Like today's the day I will sniff Steve. No, or I didn't. It just happens. I that, found myself <laughs> sniffing. Next thing I knew, I sniffed him. Taking in the echo. Now, I also wonder, Steve. Uh, you guys have done so much improv uh, that in almost every situation, is there eleven jokes you've already done? Are there jokes we've already done? You know, like, have you sniffed in, like, on stage shows many times before? Like, if I repeated myself, probably. Probably all over the place. I've never seen Jane repeat herself. I've never sniffed before. That was a first. That was a maiden sniff. That's... Now, this is Kevin Hart. This is an expanded version of your Kevin Hart fight. How is that working with Kevin? I'm, uh, first of all, I just think that the man is just... I think that he just... I don't know what to say, man. You guys are one of the funniest people I've ever stood opposite. I'll say his rents he was. Right? That's all I'm saying. I think uh, when he shot this, he was having a kid that day, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. He actually was having a kid that yeah. day, wasn't he? Yeah, he left the set uh, to, to see the kid. That's because he was a stand-up comic, and I put him in a pilot, and he knows he's got to respect. He's got to bring the respect. I don't care if you're having a kid. You show up on that fucking set and you do what I tell you to and do. And you'd be funny. No, he had the pager though. He was ready to fly if, yeah. if it happened. He would have left. Yeah. Dude was funny as hell. And he had a daughter and named her. Romany? You mean that? I want to say Heavenly. Heaven Lee. Lee. Little middle middle name Lee Hart. Heavenly Hart. Heavenly Hart. And he, do- and he doesn't want her to be a stripper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> She's already stripping somewhere. <laughs> This dwarf here don't have to be tall to shoot in the Pop face. Pop a burner in your ass. <laughs> I think it was bust a burner in your ass. Let me tell you three reasons why me and Seth love Kevin Hart. One, you can do an impression of him when you pitch him jokes yeah. and he doesn't get mad. You can Not go, enough. okay, so you say, I'm going to bust a burner in your face. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't get mad. He totally accepts it. Two, he will, he will allow you to give him dwarf jokes. Yes. Run this bitch, and now he about to bounce. No, there's only two reasons. Yeah, I <laughs> oh my God, he's kind of a prick. Other than that, <laughs> now, we, <laughs> now we debated this scene a lot because it was a point in the movie where we thought we needed to pace up, but it was weird that Romney was crying without some sort of transition, and we always loved uh, you guys yelling at each other. Romney, I love the aim high, Willis. Yeah. <laughs> because it's wrong. It should be aim high, uh, Arnold. Arnold. Arnold, yeah. Arnold. Willis yeah. was tall, man. But you know what you want? It's like the pe- it's like the pedicure thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Pedicure. Uh-huh. 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 It's uh-huh. Arnold. He's acting like a crackhead, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Well, it would have made sense if uh, uh, Rom was speaking from the point of view of Conrad Bain, <laughs> <laughs> who was nine and a half feet tall. Aim high, Conrad Bain. <laughs> Now, have you ever cried on film before? Um, no, no. It was definitely the first time. You were nervous about this, I remember. I was, man, because I didn't want to seem all pushed and fake and trying to create drama and shit. And, you know, you just, I don't know, something, you, you just made it funny. So it was cool. You also went on a whole run about how you wish... You, you were did. dating an Asian woman. Yes, yeah, I wish I was dating an Asian woman because... They they don't eat anything. They just chew gum or something yeah. crazy. You give her some gum for dinner and she's happy. Or something yeah, give her gum for dinner and she's happy. I haven't the slightest idea what that was about. I don't even know. That's actually not true. I'd like to. This, <laughs> this is the only actual piece of information I'm going to give. This is the theme song from The Greatest American Hero. Uh, oh yeah, and it's the coolest thing. That was a great show. in the movie. When this is edited for uh, airplanes, this is the theme. This song is the for... only thing that'll be on the airplane version. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The whole movie is. Do you see that movie? That's just me a riding a bicycle with Catherine Keener will be the only part that showed on an airplane. <laughs> I saw Glenn Gary Glenn Ross on an airplane, and it was all like, "You stupid bunt cake, <laughs> bunt cake." <laughs> We did uh, shoot options for uh, a lot of these curses. Yeah. Could this movie ever be played? Oh, on oh God! Could it be on an airplane? This movie? Yeah, I mean, just because there's so much stuff. You're off yeah. mic, man. You just because could come this movie on, ever Jonah? be played on an aeroplane? On an aeroplane? Uh, <laughs> well, I think so. We're working on it you right wanted, now. You want it crashing Toronto? 
<laughs> oh, Jesus. That's the only thing we have to cut out of this. <laughs> Someone make a note. <laughs> Real five. <laughs> He's from Toronto. Yeah, okay. that's hot. <laughs> well, maybe we can leave it in the plane you're talking about. Yes. Skidded, and everyone made it out. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Jerry, you always cross the line. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Jerry came into audition that in the middle of his audition you kind of lost your mind. <laughs> yeah, and you, he and, really went off. And I and I said to Steve, "Go get ready, Ben Knob's going to go off. I'm going to push him to go off on you." And then you went off, and then you went into this whole run about, about fucking his father, about mother. fucking your mother, oh, and father. And I, I don't. And uh, what was that? Why don't you fuck your mother? <laughs> well, it was one. It was a horrifying, <laughs> amusing. It was hysterically funny and yet very scary moment. Right. It was like, you're a virgin. With a, just go fuck your mother. She's yeah, my mother. Go fuck her. Yeah, yeah. Something I, happened in your eyes. Uh, well, uh, when we were auditioning, <laughs> you were looking at me, and there was... It, it it was like you became the Hulk, you know. Your your eyes got kind of demon red and glazed over, and you went in a different direction. Had you lost your mind? Then, like, like, well, I was saying, am I getting this fucking part after all this? <laughs> oh, very angry. So, but the thing is, when when Judge shouted out when we do the poker game, Judge shout, okay, Jerry improvise, and I see Steve say, oh no. <laughs> I remember in Rob's audition, you made him take his shirt off. Yeah. That was just for me. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Sean and Jed made me take my shirt like 20 times throughout this process. And that was really funny is you put, you put on David Krumholtz's jacket for some reason. Like, you took his shirt and wore it. And it was a very weird, it was just like, we don't know this guy. He's wearing our shirt for some reason. You know, my, my, my agent brought to my attention um, that when I got called in for this audition, that supposedly I didn't want to come to the audition because when I read it, even though I thought the script was funny as hell, I was like, it is obvious that Jay is some uh, white, you know, frat boy who hadn't quite grown up yet. And I was like, why the hell would you cast me for that? And I must have named off like 12 other people that could have played the role perfectly. Very and she had to actually make me come in and do it. And uh, I, I really apologize about that because I came in and got to do all this stuff and what actually constitutes a it turned out fine. But, no. You see this spot here? When you see that? This is additional, right? This is not. This is additional. This is a a prefer cock. A prefer cock. Oh, I, that has three meanings to me. I mean, and like you pray, the cock is like I pray. praying, but today I'm going to pray for the cock. Yeah. Or I'm going to pray for your cock, like I'm gay. Yes. Now this uh, this going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More. Now, now this, this scene is uh, a funny scene uh, for Cat Denning. So we just gave her all these crazy lines, screaming at her mother. One we cut out, which was, "Oh, my friends smoke pot, and I don't, and you don't even care." <laughs> Dude, how did they do that? Why is that like that? Is the mirror blue? Smoke glass. Cool. Oh, it's the mirror that's blue. It's not a reflection of a blue area of the room. You've noticed things like that before. I, you know, you have issues with the uh, sunspots. Yeah. <laughs> Rom hates sunspots in movies. Yeah. Like that one right there. No, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. <laughs> Isn't it weird, uh, Steve, that this movie, and I'm, I'm not being uh, cocky, it seems like it kind of works. Yeah. Are you surprised that the movie makes any sense whatsoever? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of am, actually. I mean, I, I watch it and, like, some of these scenes, too, I thought, there's no way this is actually going to be in the movie. Like, like this scene, for example. It, it didn't necessarily propel the plot anywhere, but it, it turned out to be kind of funnier than we thought it would be. Well, they, the audience likes uh, this whole idea of her having a daughter who's about to have sex and your relationship with the daughter and how she ultimately supports you. But it is weird overall that the movie makes any sense I will, at all. I will say, the, uh, uh, about a couple of days ago, I uh, was on uh, one of the lots and I happened to run into like the, a lot of our crew members who are working on another movie now together. And they were like, how'd the movie turn out? I told them, you know, it actually seems kind of funny, and people kind of seem to be digging it. And they, 
I could see them trying not to look shocked as <laughs> they congratulated me and were very happy about it. But you could tell that it was kind of like that shit actually cut together into something. <laughs> wow. They did seem kind of mad at me a lot. They they really seemed skeptical that what we were doing would actually make. Not even, a, like, I don't even think they thought it would make a movie. Like, not, like, beyond making a good movie is something else. I literally don't think they thought it would cut together into what you would call a movie. I, I think that they, that they always, uh, you know, you're it seems like the crew always liked Steve, mm -hmm. but didn't understand how you could make the improvs fit together. Yeah, that would definitely, I mean, I didn't either. And one guy said, I'm sick of you jerking off all day. <laughs> really? Someone <laughs> actually said that? No, no. But I felt like someone was... <laughs> Every stair had that. No, this, is, uh, this is your wife, Steve. This is my Nancy wife Walls. who had all my good ideas. <laughs> That's Nancy, who is Larry. Nancy Walls. Yo, y'all ever watch this cat okay. on 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 Cedric Reno 9 Yarborough? Nine Eleven? You, you ever see him on, on yeah. that? He's fucking Reno Nine One One. Yo, okay. dog. And of course, Dave Keckner. Dave Keckner, who has two runs that murder. Yeah. I mean, he was so funny. I mean, he made up all that stuff. How many times in this commentary have I said he made that up? Yeah, almost I don't, every I don't think, line, I think. <laughs> I mean, Steve can say he wrote stuff because he made up his shit. I, I think by the end of this, I've written nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I've led in good direction. That's what makes you a good writer. No, nah, that's Judd's that's style. Judd had this whole thing. He'd just be like, um... I hope you bought your A game. And yeah. action! <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to bring it? That was Are we ready to bring it tonight? Are you going to uh, bring it? I hope you got your A game. <laughs> that's, that's a dream of an actor to walk the judge. <laughs> yo, yo, you, you, you can stop the judge's ass real quick while I say okay. this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best vagina joke you're going to get. Yeah. Oh. And then my friend Jeff Kahn, who was a writer on the Ben Stiller show, is uh, the, the guy who talks about this kid having a Jufro, which is also a great oh, yeah. thing yeah. to bring in. And I was really surprised that by the end of this process, we were allowed to say things like Jufro. Oh, yeah, that did not seem uh, like it was on the table. Oh, after, <laughs> the, <laughs> you know, after the sand nigga run, you could pretty much say yeah, whatever exactly. you want. Yeah, exactly. Once you go there. <laughs> I like that he called the Jufro kid Seth the entire time. I thought that was... <laughs> you know, if this movie is a, is a success, there next summer... That Jufro is going to be in every movie. There's going to be out. a movie called Jufro. <laughs> <laughs> Starring you. Starring me, I hope. I'm pitching it to Jonah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Me Wait and Jonah in. Shauna, so you've been saying Jufro this whole time because you got it from there? Jufro's an expression. I mean, I think Jufro's kind of a, I wouldn't say widely used expression, but. You know what? It's a Look, I wasn't here on this day. Sean is the first person I ever heard say Jufro when it stuck for me. Have I mean, you been using it? No, I have no, no reason to at all. Yeah. Rom hates Jufro. Frankly. No, wait, but, but Jonah, you kind of have a Jufro. Yes, I'm uh, actually told that by some people. It's kind of, a, I think it more was an offensive thing. Like, it's like demeaning. It's like. Fuck you, you have a Jufro, like an insult. I know? was just like, Jufro real, man? <laughs> Jufro real? Jufro <laughs> real. I have got people sometimes, when they talk about my hair, they go, you got a nice kite cut. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think it's been a term of endearment. I do, too. I, <laughs> I think they're referring to your circumcision when they yes. say that. I just say that I okay, have a chosen so hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> Shauna wanted me to tell a story about, uh, I drive a Prius. Yes. I don't know if you guys... You know how to know you're gay? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, funny you say that. Someone, <laughs> someone keyed the word gay into the hood of my oh Prius. My oh, no. <laughs> oh, you say that. You say that. Oh. And then I got it drunk. It was me. <laughs> and then I got drunk one night, and I keyed the word not on top of the gay. <laughs> you keyed your own Yeah, Prius. and it was the weirdest feeling of all time, keying my own car. I thought you were going to say you, you keyed in pride or something like that. <laughs> now I, here, keyed, I keyed an this exclamation is, point. Is this, the, this is the drug run. Let's listen. Oh, you put it in. Let's see. <laughs> just when it couldn't I'm get long. Going anyway. Oh, this is one of my favorite jokes. Now, I want you where, you, where are you going? I'm just going to stay home and get baked for a week. <laughs> I just heard that Gandhi term baked that day. I'd never heard that. <laughs> I was feel bad that big of a lie you ever told. I get really hungry <laughs> a lot, and poor Gandhi's fucking starving, starving his ass off for a whole time. I started laughing during that lot. <laughs> this, this is another scene that I liked that we didn't have time for in the movie. The guy who loves Michael McDonald. Yeah. Well, you've never seen this. No. Also, the guy who shit kicks Mark Wahlberg and Boogie Nights. If I'm not yes, Shannon Rowe, very good actor. Years. Yeah, I've been in like 48 minutes. <laughs> 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 Don't get the set off. What if he beat you up? 
in the same way he did in Boogie Nights. Exactly. First he gets you to jack off. Then he gets you. That's his trick. It's sneaky. He lulls you into a sense of uh, <laughs> everything's okay. Didn't it take like seven days to shoot this? Yeah. I felt like we shot this film We shot it in four chunks. Forever. Yeah, we shot this scene, every person on a different day. I know. <laughs> I'm doing Rom's off camera with him. <laughs> and somehow it still works just because I forced Rom to talk about his baby's dick for about a half an hour straight. I know. It was, I, I, was dreading coming, I was dreading this scene because I just kind of felt like you just you have to run out of shit here. You you know, yeah. I had nothing. And you know what saved this is uh, Jerry Bearbound uh, saying, even my sister's dick looks big on TV. <laughs> <laughs> on a 60 inch TV. Yeah, yeah, 60 inch. You say the words baby's I like dick and dead baby. you're going to get a laugh. Colleen, a four months What's old. weird to me about that is that women don't have dicks, so that doesn't, or doesn't track. No, no, you're telling me. That doesn't track to Whoa. Me. That is an <laughs> I can't thing. believe the script supervisor right. never caught that. That's just caught what? an odd notion. You know the first time I ever saw a mammogram in real life? That's not a mammogram. A mammogram. Sonogram. 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 Mammogram. Mammogram. Pedicure. This is my first time. Ma- a mammogram is on your toenails. Yeah. Oh, that's your. <laughs> 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 it's an image of your. I didn't realize Romney's biggest inspiration was Norm Crosby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, 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 well. <laughs> <laughs> Unless she has a baby in a breast. Uh, that was my that's first my time seeing one of those, straight up. That was our producer. Wasn't, wasn't, that, wasn't that our line thing. producer's baby in the sonogram? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. Clayton's. Yeah, uh, Clayton's uh, son. Yeah. Now, Shelly, what do you remember about your audition for Haziz? Um, not much. I was kind of in a daze, I think. Uh, <laughs> I remember, I remember coming there and uh, my agent telling me about it's going to be a lot of improv. So. I just remember that it, I was so relieved to work with Steve because, uh, you know, before that, I think I, I read one of the time, I don't know who I was reading with. But probably Seth. I, probably me. I was Seth, fucked yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but when I read with Steve, it was just like he just he just made it so easy because he was just giving me so much, and uh, I had a good time doing it. I just remember there was one part where I put my face on his face or something like that. I just felt really connected to him. <laughs> oh, sweet. That, that is a sweet. Shelly was the best kiss. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Audition. Well, Les yeah. Leslie's not here. That's why you're saying that. <laughs> that is so sweet. And when my wife kissed Matthew Broderick in The Cable Guy, I remember watching the dailies, and in the daily, there's this huge gob of spit that connects from them when they part, Ooh, like a, like a, a, a drawbridge. It haunts me. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Now, this is like the kind of scene that I was nervous about, like a guy avoiding sex because he has to clean up his toys. <laughs> it, it oddly yeah. works. This is the kind of thing that I've done in life. <laughs> you have with me, anyway. You know, what I think about a lot uh, in, in uh, working on this movie and, and in the writing was, and this is a story about... Uh, my period of like post-sex virginity. I had like a period of virginity after having sex, which means a dry spell, a multi-year dry spell. But what what propelled it? And I'll tell you this, Jerry. You know this well because you were a comedian too, like me. Went on the road. This nurse hit on me really hard in San Luis Obispo. <laughs> Some crazy hot nurse. Bob Zini's gig. Yep. And I didn't I didn't see it coming at all. Next thing I know, I'm in the room with this girl. And I'm going to tell you exactly how long the sex lasted, okay? This is how long it lasted. If it started, it starts now. I don't just change like that. I can't just change. And that's it. <laughs> right? And so then she looks like kind of dazed, like, what the hell is that? And, okay, well, and, and then we, like, uh, relax and <laughs> cut her up again. And then the second one, I'll tell you, it lasted this long, starting here. Because I like to. Einstein rode a bike. <laughs> wow. was, yeah, and then I never forget the look in her eyes, which is just like, what? Oh God, I feel so dirty. Why am I here? Yeah. Oh no! And I just remember sitting there, and Richard Pryor, JoJo Dancer, Your Life Is Calling, was on TV, and it was just, it was awful. It took me like years to recover. And I always thought about that while making this movie. That feeling of like. Oh no! <laughs> Did I really give you one minute after? No, I, I, I can't. Can't. Okay. 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 Not spur. to like make a mockery of Seth. And I think you really got to teach me, bro. Teach me. <laughs> <laughs> teach me. Which one? Which guy said you? Can you teach me, Steve? Yeah. Um, 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 Andy, can you teach me? We got, that was a very funny line. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, it was. This commentary so long, we're already reminiscing about the commentary. 
Yeah. Everyone be commenting on that. Yo, 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 this is my favorite part. Yo, right here, right here. Y'all watch it. Watch it. Pay attention. Yes, yes. Damn, it ain't caught yet. Woo. All right, now who can top that story I just told? Um... Come on, okay, I, okay, I can I, I can't really, I can't bad really stop story. it. Bad sex story. Bad sex story. I remember Rob. I, this isn't a bad sex story. I don't think Rob has a bad sex story. I do. I have bad sex stories. But man. I remember you would say about you know I would be abstinent for a while. And I was like, and then what would happen when you stop being abstinent? And you use the words, I would tear through a whole village. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember we were, we were, when we were rehearsing, we let this woman from the New York Times come. Oh, that was and, not cool. And, and sit in on our rehearsals as a desperate plea for press. And Romney tells a story about losing his virginity at what age? For you. Okay. Six. Six. Uh, and then we made a point of saying, please don't print this section. And she promised. And then it was in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. And the, did you have a lot of feedback from people about that? You know, people in the industry called, they were kind of upset because the way she put it together, came together as like, I lost my virginity at the age of six to an entire village. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> you know. nah, but um, yeah, people in the industry was kind of pissed off, and I was kind of pissed off. It was a good lesson for me, like, don't you know, talk about just, getting yeah, laid in your don't, sex. Don't, don't, you know, just exactly. save it for a DVD no. commentary. <laughs> 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 yeah. you know. Hey, if they wait this <laughs> long, private. Yeah, <laughs> if they wait this long and yeah, exactly. listen, they just do it all. This is nestled between <laughs> hours four and five, so I think. We're <laughs> no, no, no. I, but I got, I got, I got bad sex stories. I got. But but that's not like a molestation. That's like. You being aggressive at six. Yeah, I don't think people get it. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know what? You know what? It's kind of like, oh, yeah, exactly. I was described. not forced in any kind of way. It's just, you know, I don't know. I don't want to blame. I don't want to talk about that, really. Um, <laughs> so you had sex when you were six years old? <laughs> Seriously? Are you talking to me? Yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> you had sex with a woman? Or a girl or a sheep when you were six? <laughs> we'll step outside and talk about this later. <laughs> I believe I remember the story, which was. His his babysitter, who wasn't that much older, saw his dick and went wild. No, <laughs> man, what is going on in here? That is, none of this is true. Just for the record, none of this is true. You know, it's good. I'm, she was not my babysitter. I'm an easy guy to make fun of. Okay, it was my aunt and. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. You're such a good guy, and I appreciate you. Well, maybe the best take of this scene, in the middle of it, you spilled a shot on your shirt, and then we kept trying to match the yeah. the, 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 the water on your shirt, and we couldn't, so we had to not use it. <laughs> He kept drying. Totally Steve was drinking a little in this scene. Did you, how much did you drink this day? I had a few, I had a few uh, shots oh, you did to, oh. to loosen up the... Loosen, up. Yeah. loosen the lube. <laughs> now, do you recommend that for a young actors ever to get drunk if you're playing drunk? Oh, highly. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you do if you can't act. I wanted that shirt. I wanted to take it that shirt off. great on you. Man, I should have got that shirt. You can steal wardrobe. It's, it's okay. No. They get mad, but you can do it. Cal's a good guy. Yes, yeah, he's a great guy. It's this so funny new. because, you know... This is a longer version of this scene. Yo, is this the make-out, though? Oh, yeah. No, I... Uh, I'm not gay. Marika, who we haven't even mentioned, who's very nice. Marika Dominic. Marika, you're yeah, very nice. She was good, man. Uh, but seriously... I'm I remember telling Paul, hey, Paul, you know, I'm going to... I think you should make out with her. Come over and talk to you. You're very All right. Very <laughs> <laughs> An actor's life. Well, but one of the extras was trying to hit on Paul, you remember? One of the extras, the girl, he was going to hit the meat. Hey, what are you doing, hitting your head with a water bottle? <laughs> <laughs> Romney, I can hear that on the DVD I commentary. I like <laughs> I just like the way it sounded. Listen, you're you're always making beats, aren't you? <laughs> he just can't help it. Awesome. I think Rom's drunk. Hey, you! <laughs> now, I don't remember who thought of this joke about, I hope you have a big chunk, I'm about to put my back in it. I feel like Steve said that in a rehearsal. This line is good. Oh, this is her response. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This, her response is what makes the yes. whole thing. Hello! Hey! <laughs> no, no, both of those this lines are incredible. It's, it's her Ed McMahon gambit. Exactly. hi <laughs> Hope you have a big trunk, because I'm putting my bike in it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Yeah, that's <laughs>
<laughs> She's excellent right there, yo. Let me tell you something. She is the funniest person in the movie Sea Biscuit. Yes. <laughs> 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 you know, she just left to do that movie with Mark Wahlberg. That's um, right. What's it called? Um, Rise, I believe. No, I'm playing. It's called. Um, well, did anybody Invincible. see Rise? Invincible. Invincible. But did anybody see Rise, by the way? Him? No. No. I mean, it figures. All right. Okay. Hey, Go hey, 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 hey. Did you see Juice? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say name all black movies. <laughs> oh hey hey hey! Did you see New Jack City? <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I, I saw that last night. I saw yeah. that last night. It was on. Uh, it, yeah, night. Did you see Breaking Two Electric Boogaloo? I did. I actually own that. You yeah. Know? yeah. You know the thing about Elizabeth Banks is that she's ugly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's gross. It's really cool because her personality really kind of helps, makes her a bit more palatable. Because usually you would struggle. But a physical sight gag, yeah. 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 Now, this is my favorite joke that we cut out. This is out. literally Judd's favorite joke in what, the world. Have, have <laughs> it's the who's on first of butt fuck jokes. We can do it in the. <laughs> but if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> when you walked in there to. Uh, not when, so when you, everybody get out of here and you put your shirt. <laughs> so Nothing wrong with Seth taking off his shirt in no, motion it's great. No, it's I'll funny, it. man. I can't believe I cut this out of the movie. I, this is a you're gonna, you're regretting it now. I am, but we were at an hour fifty-one. What can I, I do? Did you just think of that on a spot? But what? what no, Judd came in with no. This, this oh. was a this yeah. was a a, a well-crafted <laughs> <laughs> anal <laughs> who's on first <laughs> and <laughs> delivered <laughs> and delivered really well too. Yeah, yeah it was nice. Now it was. It, this was always really interesting. How much the crowd roared at seeing what, <laughs> the aftermath of the waxing. Yeah. Oh, right. Like they forget okay. about it. Yeah. <laughs> that was a fun day. <laughs> I, I literally wrote nothing in this movie. I've been c trying to pay attention to yeah. things I wrote. I wrote the butt joke and I wrote the nipple, but I think that's it. Yeah. That might actually be it. Now, I know that Shauna wants me to mention because she's obsessed with the fact that all these fishes died. Is that the. Uh, uh, the I asked for those. What the hell? You killed them? We killed them. I we know, hand so, killed something, them. Something went wrong with. <laughs> well, they were alive during this take. Yes. During three takes. <laughs> something wrong. I don't know. I don't think people kept them right. And as a result, the Humane Society would not put their stamp of approval on our film. No that animals were harmed in the making of this yeah. movie. We, we had four animals harmed in the making yeah. of our movie. And then Matt, I'm about to say, remember, fish is not an animal. What? Fish is, not an fish is technically a plant. Yes. I, oh, uh, <laughs> it's an entree. Technically, a vegetable. No, actually, well, technically yeah. it's a fruit because it's a legume. No, it's a legume. No, but you yeah, no legumes. You get confused with it because they're from the ground. Yo, did this really hurt right here? <laughs> now this is a sequence I was so nervous about that that, that this movie leads to a, a, a long sequence where a woman masturbates in a tub. No. I was very scared that we were going to realize that we had made an awful miscalculation. And, and, and the sequence we were, it was going, it never played badly, but it really took off when we found this improv of Steve's, which was, wow, this is graphic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other, my other favorite thing that was added was the shot of Steve just standing there that like, could not be a more plain looking shot of a guy <laughs> standing there. <laughs> it's like the most emotionless. <laughs> and then we have this fishes on oh, the wallpaper and there's funny scene. Is, there a, is that the, like the Georgia O'Keeffe yeah, vagina there's like, pictures? There's like blossoming flowers everywhere and tacos. Uh. <laughs> what do you remember of this scene, Steve? Because she was naked. She was naked in front of me in a bathtub. And she looked like she couldn't have cared less. She really did. Um, she was a pro. <laughs> <laughs> the woman's an ultimate, ultimate professional. Um, Where's your friend going? It's weird to direct a woman. <laughs> Where's your friend going? It's weird to direct a woman putting a faucet up herself. <laughs> That's always good to warm yes. up. You don't want to pull something. <laughs> you know how a lot of a lot of scenes like this, people always say, you know, there was no sexual tension. It was all business. This was exactly the opposite. <laughs> it, yes. We were so into it and into each other. <laughs> I love to, the toe. The it, toe was, the, was all attention and no business. 
And then you hit the TLC, man, and it just yeah. starts rocking. <laughs> a little red light special. Wow. I love that song choices. Yeah, I too. Very sensual. <gasps> what are you doing here? We came here because we were concerned about you and Trish. And we debated yeah. whether or not we needed the scene. It has a little Three Stooges feel, like you turn and your friends are in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> like eight months back. What? Never gave it back the key, man. You, you have no... We're idea. running out of gas. Come right on, now. Jonah. Jonah, we invited you here to make this thing work. Guys, what's the deal with airplane food? It doesn't taste good. Come on. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't do this. Because you look like Edvard Mooks, the scream. That was one of the funniest. When you, you can't do this, but you got to finish shaving your chest first because you look like Edvard the Mooks, the scream. <laughs> oh, that God. made me laugh. Yeah. So fucking hard. Oh, yeah. Now, Jerry, where will you be performing in the next few weeks if anyone wants to see you? I'd be... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's comes out here a couple of weeks, so I'll be already performing. I, yeah. oh, I had performed already, so... Now, when this movie comes out, are you going to jack up your road price? I'll, ja- I'll be able to save... Oh, I cannot oh, believe you sound. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. You know, you, so you never have to go on the road again. Yeah. You see how this thing is getting orange, like... Ah! That's kind of dope. Braum is hammered. Steve, was this scary to shoot? Was riding the bike scary to yes. shoot? Riding down Ventura Boulevard? Hey no, well, not really. It, that was the first day we shot. Yeah. That was the first I'm evening. Really sorry about that. We were just kind of... You were driving fast when you were, like, going, like, tan drug. Ah, like, yeah. you were driving, really, chasing the truck. I, think I smell like garlic. What, ha- what happened... <laughs> I think you're right. I think Ron might actually be drunk and covered in garlic. What happened to the Doug Henning picture? Does it, do we know? Wait a second. Where it is actually now? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but you know what's great about Hollywood is that if Seth started dating Lisa, what's her name, Lohan? Lindsay. Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan. Lohan. You go. I'm like my dad now. Yeah, exactly. What Lisa, Bonet. what's her name? Bonet. <laughs> but if, if, if Seth started dating Lindsay Lohan, you would be right there on the front pages in all that, like, it's are they true. getting along gossip. That's, I know. That's kind of interesting. And it'd be so weird, because of course we'd be getting along. No, I, mean, <laughs> I don't get where all that skepticism would come from. <laughs> Seth Rogen has also made, like, a really interesting art piece. I actually have. This is it. what I've done throughout the I've Very, made, uh, Little rock I, I made concentric uh, <laughs> napkin balls that get bigger, then smaller, and then bigger again as they go on. We had an in excess song here, Never Tear Us Apart. And then at the last minute, we switched it out for this Asia song. And we debated it a lot, but it seems to work. And then in a blind decision, we picked Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Even though no one knows this is Asia. <laughs> but, you know, I always thought that the music of Andy would be, should be... Oh, God. Uh, music from Andy. Yeah, it's yeah. his high school, you know... He stopped listening to new music at the moment. Oh, he should have had sex. Right. Oh, this oh, is. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 That was really me, the whole thing. <laughs> now, Judd, Spike Jones was on set when we shot this. How did you feel? Oh, about my that? God. I was so excited to say, hey, Spike, check out how I direct. I don't move the camera. Yeah. <laughs> was he really there? He yeah. did. He came to visit Catherine, and uh, it was very exciting. He was wearing a suit. <laughs> he was wearing a suit. <laughs> was he you like, get nervous when other directors <laughs> come to set and you're directing this? <laughs> Are you okay? I'm okay. I remember when we were shooting an undeclared episode uh, in a bar, and the the most of what we were shooting that day was like people doing belly shots and shit like that. And Wes Anderson was maybe going to come by set that day, and I remember you were like so nervous that he was going to come by and like see us just shooting like women flashing each other and shit like that. Like, <laughs> see how lame my exactly, career is. Yeah. <laughs> it's quirky, huh? And then I would say to him, "How's Angelica Houston?" Exactly. I'm mm-hmm. working with Seth Rogen. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> Seth Rogen. Well, I'm proud of my <laughs> Seth Rogen. Exactly. <laughs> Damn it. Now, with this night, we, we had a lot of time to shoot this because we were nervous that if this didn't work, the whole movie doesn't work. 
And both of you guys thought this wasn't working, I remember. Yeah, this was, this was hard. I, That's why I never tried to have Because we shot till like, 5, five in the morning. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of an all-night thing, and exactly. just kind of lose track of what's going on at a certain point. Of course. I went home. I remember just being there and just, just hearing Captain Keener constantly yelling to the guy in the car, Go fuck your mother. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember she'd like that guy in the car, Matt out. McCain. Matt McCain, genius. Who was funny as hell. If you need a guy to yell a profanity, Matt McCain. Get the fuck out of the road, Virgin. Hilarious. He's our go-to guy. We always use. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. Sorry. He's kind of the American Jerry Bednap. <laughs> well, what's nice about this is after all of the uh, the fun, but people buy into this not like uh, it's uh, uh, you know a broad character. It's like a real yeah, moment. I think that that's this where the is, energy went. I think you know what? This is where I fall in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> now, Steve, can you enjoy yourself when you watch the movie? Do you actually enjoy it? How do you experience it? I want everybody to answer that question. Actually, it's yeah. almost it's almost impossible to watch your own performance in I, for me in anything. Is it painful or can you enjoy? Yeah, it's painful because it's never quite what you think it it might be or could have been, yeah. and. Uh, yeah, you never sit. I don't ever sit and kind of revel in it. I always think, oh man, that's not, Loud Wayne not what a creature. Is Loud Wayne Wright the third, our good luck charm. Yeah. It's just like stand up. I don't look at my stand up tapes at all. Yeah. Yeah. Just like you would know, yeah. Windiest day ever. As you know, it's like watching porn. I'm, I'm looking for the weak spot only. I'm, I'm totally always startled how good looking I am. Yeah. Yes. 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 I take my breath away. Now, Jerry, when you listen to your stand up tapes, can you understand a word you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> so I know Seth enjoys himself. He literally watches it. I do over. kind of enjoy I mean, I'd be lying. People ask me, say, Jerry, do you ever have a problem with your accent? I say, nobody audience, audience does. Yes. I don't have a problem. I can understand my accent. I revel. I watch it and think this is exactly what I was going for. There I am again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was really happy Judd would let me play two roles. And, uh, I know, it's weird. It's very and uh, yeah. also, I play Latino pretty well. <laughs> You're like a Peter Sellers. What's funny, I don't think anyone who has an accent in this movie, except Jerry, actually has that accent. <laughs> except Jerry, Jerry, what's your best heckle line if someone says, Hey, fuck you, what do you say? I'll uh, say, why didn't you dress... Why didn't you wear a condom over your, your whole body? Because you're acting like a prick, you might as well dress like one. Oh, <laughs> my. Something Oh, that's high, bro. I'm yeah. going to add the Foley uh, line, uh, the Foley noise that I've always wanted. Oh, there it is. <laughs> this is a little bit of a joke of life right now. What's that? It's a little bit of your life right now, this first moment here. Uh, one so wait, your eight period, seconds it would yeah. be me. This one minute great. later. When we had to go back in and do ADR and try to, you know, to dub in some of the lines that didn't work, we actually had to do the the kissing for the scene. So we had to go, like kiss your hand. It was the grossest sensation to kiss. It depends the on what you've been doing with your hands. Too. Yeah. Now, what's amazing, I think, acting-wise, uh, for you and her, is that it, you, you, <laughs> I was going to compliment them that you really think they're having sex. <laughs> Seth, you have to ruin it with the... <laughs> with a oh, queen. Why do you always try to get to that? I've been pushing with a queen for six months. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to me on the commentary. <laughs> I do say queen puts us in NC-17. It makes a noise. That's a first. <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> I, I remember Seth actually original. <laughs> I did a little. Now, now Gary Shanling always had this note that if, when the virgin has sex, it has to be better than everybody else's sex, and you have to show it's that true, somehow. He didn't keep talking about that. And he was obsessed with it like it has to be better he than really was obsessed with it and then Steve you came up with this idea that you would sing a song yeah there's kind of nowhere else it could go <laughs> is this actually you singing Steve Crow? oh no and no. our, our executive producer John no, this is figured a, out this, this is a very, I very good very well singer. be the first <laughs> black man in the history of filmmaking to do something like this except the black guy no in the hair. first straight <laughs> I mean the first straight black man this is fun this oh fun. my god that's okay. sexy yes I cannot believe the weight you put on for this role, Seth. I know. It was, it was De Niro-esque, I would say. Uh, I weighed 38 pounds at the beginning. 
<laughs> I'm actually, that was better than I thought it would look. I know. I remember Jen actually kind of kept complimenting me on my physique, which was half insulting because it was like, how fucking fat did you think I was this what entire time? Was What's bad. weird is actually how similar um, my build is to Rom's. Exactly. Here's why Rom is hilarious, because all day he was complaining about the water weight that he had put on during the making of the movie. Man. As you can see, I had a whole bunch of water. Yeah. <laughs> Jonah, Jonah actually got heat stroke after. Uh, okay, you know what? I actually, well, let Jonah tell the story. What happened, Jonah? I got heat stroke pretty severely. <laughs> oh, and, and, uh, oh my God! For two days. <laughs> I kept the poncho and I uh, had to drink a lot of Pedialyte, and I thought I was going to die. Pass away. <laughs> because I made you dance with a poncho, and, <laughs> and I was wearing drink. a beanie with wool on the inside. And Shauna kept saying, "Take off your beanie," and I was like, "No, I want to stay in character as a joke." And then. I went home and got heat <laughs> Oh, shit. That would have been embarrassing if you died from wearing a poncho. I know. This would officially be the least uh, Would you guys have put worthwhile. dedicated to the memory of Jonah Hill? <laughs> like in a little right sweet here, note yeah. at the exactly. end. Exactly. <laughs> no. And then we would have no, put like, just a little clip of you saying something. Yeah, exactly. Or just a like, freeze frame yeah. with you in the boots. <laughs> Doing like the robot or something. Embarrassing. Nice. Let's do this again. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Rewind that? It. I know it's gonna sound cheesy, Judd, but thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, for writing the movie. Oh, there's yeah. Hammer. Oh, that's Hammer. <laughs> another. Oh, another. yo, damn, Shelly, I know you got down. That's the, that's the Bollywood days coming out. <laughs> <laughs> now this is an extended version of the song that goes on for a very long time. <laughs> You know, I, I did so well in this that they they asked, asked me to direct Newsies too. Yeah, <laughs> one. Uh, I was about to sing the song from Newsies because I know it, but then remembered I can't, so I won't. I love the shot. That's yeah. dope, dog. All right. Well, that thank you, everybody, no, for all your thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Is it great? All good things. Now, if I'm not I'm mistaken, good. we negotiated uh, fourth billing for me, and I noticed that my name came fifth, and I just. Uh-oh, talk to your agent. <laughs> <laughs> and cut.